And welcome everyone to the J. Lawrence Walk-Up Sky Dome on the campus of Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, we're at 7,000 feet elevation, but so is Reggie Eccleston, our sideline reporter. Reggie, a couple of quick thoughts from you, sir, before we get into this Hinton Burdick Grand Canyon Cup matchup between Southern Utah and NAU. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. Uh, one of the first things that comes to mind is what Kevin said, seize the moment. And that's the most important thing. Back to you guys. Seize the moment, seize the day. Carpe diem. All right. Southern Utah lost the coin toss. NAU elected to receive. And here comes the opening kickoff. And it does not appear as though it's going to be returnable as it's going to bounce out of the back of the end zone and be a touchback for the Lumberjacks. For our radio listeners, NAU will be moving left to right across your radio dial, and that's Kerry Grosser, the senior out of California, the starting quarterback for the NAU Lumberjacks. 192 passes he's thrown this season. He's completed 66.1% of those, 10 touchdowns, 5 interceptions for 1,425 yards. He was Big Sky Conference honorable mention in 2011 and third team All-American last year. The Jacks break the huddle for our radio listeners. They're wearing their all blue jerseys and pants with the gold and the white trim. NAU comes out in the I formation. Hess the up back, Zach Bowman the deep back. Gonna be a handoff to Bowman, dances left and bounces right into the middle of the field. It'll be tackled for a gain of about four yards. Let's take a look at the starters for NAU offensively up front. Gursky, Walker, Garcia gets the start instead of Monez, who is hurt. Wilson moves in for Garcia over on the right guard. Gilio at right tackle. Then the skilled players, position players, Zach Bowman, R.J. Rickert, the tight end, Ify Yamoto, Dejon Walker, Nick Cole, wide receiver, transfer out of Oregon. Second down and about five for NAU, single back formation. Rossert's under center, takes the snap, and then hands it off Bowman, trying to kind of slant his way left side and really finds it tough there, only a gain of about a yard. Defensively for Southern Utah, it's Kowser, Larson, Meyer, and Tuku Afu up front. The linebackers are Fentroy. Browning and Needham. Keep an eye on Zach Browning in the middle. He's one of the best. Sims, Colette, Killebrew, and Mills are in the defensive secondary. Southern Utah for our radio listeners. Black pants, white jerseys with black numbers, black helmets. Shotgun on third down and about four from the 31-yard line. Grossert brings the deuce in motion. He fires it to the near side to the deuce, who catches it at about the 35-yard line. He's spun there and tackled, and that's enough for a Lumberjack first down. Tackle made on the play by Mike Needham. And a, and a good, quick pass by Kerry Grosser on time allowed uh, them to continue the possession and get a first down. Austin Shanks with the reception. Shanks, the fifth-year senior, 5'8", 175. Can play running back, can play slot receiver. Came into the game with 20 catches. That was his 21st. Straight up high formation now. First down and 10 NAU at their own 37. Going to be a handoff. Trying to bounce and turn the corner. Zach Bowman, he gets smacked pretty hard as he turns the corner on the near side of the field for a short gain of a yard or two. That's Zach Browning. Browning with 62 unassisted tackles coming to this game. Really a player. You're going to see him all over the field today. He is number two in the Big Sky Conference. Zach Browning is in forced fumbles coming into this game. He's 5'11", 215 pounds, and a, check it out, a freshman out of Camas, Washington, went to Union High School with the tackle. Second, and we'll call it about eight on the gain of two for Bowman. The ball is at the Lumberjack 39-yard line. Shotgun, Grosser calls for the ball. Fires this one out to the far side, and it is darn near almost picked off over there on the far side of the field by J.T. Anderson. That is a great play by Austin Shanks. J.T. Anderson had that ball intercepted, and had he been able to hold on to it, it would have been a touchdown. Austin Shanks turned defender, and fortunately for NAU, he was able to get that ball to drop to the, uh, the turf to really save a touchdown. Anderson already has one interception this season. That would have been his second and probably for a pick six. Incomplete pass. Third down and extra long at, say, about eight yards at the Lumberjack 39. Grossert's in the shotgun moving in motion to Jean Walker out to the far side. Grossert calls for the ball. 
Fires this one out, looking for Walker with the first down marker. He's got it. Far sideline, tackled to the 50-yard line. Another first down for the Lumberjacks. Tackle made by LaShawn Sims, the cornerback out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, we talked about it a little bit this week. It seems like Deshaun Walker is, has become one of Case, uh, Kerry Grossard's comfort blankets. When he needs a, a real big play, he goes to him, and that time he did on an out route for the first down. His 25th catch of the season. He's got over 340 yards receiving. Now they go to the I formation on the far hash. First down and 10, midfield, left to right. Here's the snap to Grossert. Play action, deep drop. Now Grossert's on the run. From that to the near side of the field and throws this one, trying to find... On the near side of the field, we have a flag down on the play. He was They're, looking for he was looking for Nick Cole. He couldn't. It's caught out of bounds, incomplete. They're going to get Kerry Grosser throwing the ball beyond the line of scrimmage, probably only by about a yard. That's all it takes. Uh, he kept looking for an open receiver. That's one of his strengths. He, he keeps those eyes looking downfield, even when he's being pursued by defenders. That time, uh, crossed that line of scrimmage, which is uh, going to go against the, the Jets. <laughs> There looks like we're having a little bit of trouble getting our ref mic sound in for our radio listeners. And the key there is is it comes with a, a five-yard penalty and loss, loss of down. down. So now you're second, and, you know, roughly 15. Or exactly 15. <laughs> you know, as an account, you should be able to keep track of these. Are we going to worry about <laughs> those details? I'll remember that when you're d doing my taxes. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to say anything. Uh, thank you, Reggie. <laughs> uh, second down at 15. Jacks at their own 45. Shotgun. Grosser calls for the ball. Fakes a handoff. Now gives it to the deuce. Coming to the near side. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. First down, Lumberjacks into Thunderbird territory at the 38-yard line. Tackle made by strong safety, Miles Killebrew. And a great fake by Kerry Grosser here. You see him fake it to Zach Bowman and then uh, get Austin Shanks on the end around. He makes Ooh. one guy miss. See that move? And that is, uh, that's good stuff right there. That was a great open field move by the guy we call the deuce, number two, Austin Shanks. Shanks out of Pacoima, California, Crespi High School. First and 10 NAU at the 38 of Southern Utah. Double tight end set, high formation. Hand off Bowman up the middle. Bowman hit and hit again. Gain of two on the play for NAU's leading rusher with 1,055 yards coming in. Mike Needham making the tackle for Southern Utah. You know, that guy right there, number 34, he is the only running back in NAU football history ever to gain 1,000 yards rushing in three seasons. His first three seasons as a lumberjack. Even better. With one more to go. Indeed. Second down and eight. Single setback is Bowman at the 36 of Southern Utah. Grosser, deep drop. Oh, man, he got hit hard as he threw the ball. It's going to be intercepted in the middle of the field by Zach Browning. Zach Browning is going to be tackled at about the 38-yard line. Or check that. Making the hit. The hit on the play was Font Fentroy. Yeah, Fentroy watch, goes, watch Fentroy goes go over air blocker. And that was really the key to that play. And Terry that Grosser trying to go downfield to Drew Emanuel. And Browning, who seems to be all over the field, right there for, uh, to pick off the ball. And come up with a pretty hey. nice return. It's going to give uh, Southern Utah good field position. That was a pretty good-looking interception. There's Brad Sorensen, the senior quarterback for Southern Utah University, 6'5", 235 pounds out of Grand Terrace, California. He redshirted at BYU, went to San Bernardino Valley College, had an LDS mission, and he is something special. Under center, three-step drop, fires it out to the far side of the field, dropped and incomplete. And let's take a look at the offense for Southern Utah University up front. It's Cody Burgess, Gavin Farr on the left side, Dylan Fox is at center, Zach Brackus, big 6'5", 3'10", junior, is at right guard. Russell Peterson is at right tackle. There you see them graphically. And then for Southern Utah University, you've got Wilson, Brown, Moala, Henderson, and McNabb. And, Wait, of course, the quarterback is Brad Sorensen. You saw that NFL-type velocity on that Ooh. pass as it just zipped out there. Almost too much for that receiver. Shotgun Sorensen calls for the ball, second and ten. Comes out to the near side of the field. Dropped again! Another drop, and that's two in a row for Southern Utah. Defensively, up front for NAU to start this game. Big Jared Bilbray, Wilkinson, Ike, and Steven Garcia. 
the four up front. 4-3 alignment for NAU. In the linebacker positions, you'll find Chris Connolly, Austin Haskett, Ryan Reardon. As we take a look again at the defensive line, and there's the linebackers, Reardon, Haskett, Connolly. And the defensive secondary, Devin Willis, Anders Battle, Lucky Dozier, Blair Wisham, they're the best in the big sky at air defense. Third and 10 at their own 40. Sorensen shotgun calls for the ball, under pressure, goes deep, nobody there. Good coverage. It was intended on the far side of the field for Henna Brown, it but like, it was great coverage. And it seemed like uh, Brown kind of kind of slowed up. Uh, yeah. Brad Sorensen was going uh, for the street route. Brown pulled up a little bit. Ball soared over Brown's head. Yeah, kind of kind of interesting. Kind of an inauspicious start, if you will, for Southern Utah offensively. Two drop passes, and then perhaps a little confusion. I'm not sure on the third pass, and they go three and out. Three consecutive passing plays. And a used pass defense that's been great all year is going to be tested today. There's the best punt returner in FCS, the Deuce. Austin Shanks is back deep. He lets it bounce at the 16, get into the end zone. It does. Touchback. So they go 4-3 up front. And Needham, Browning, and Ma'ari Fentroy. Ma'ari. Ma Namari. <laughs> Namari Fentroy is over at the Sam or the strong side linebacker. They're very good. Snap, shotgun. Rosser over the middle, caught Ify Umodu, short of the first down marker. Just short on a crossing route by Ify Umodu. There you see Ed Lamb in his fifth year. Your former teammate. At, uh, that's right. Up in uh, Ricks College, now BYU-Idaho. We came in together 20 years ago in 1992 as, as a freshman. He and I uh, played on what was an undefeated 11-0 uh, football team. You know, I, I would look at you, and I'd look at Coach, and I would say, I you wouldn't think some, it would be a year over You see some 10. similarities there, don't you, about uh, <laughs> the top of our heads? I do, I do. It was good to see him, wasn't it? That was great. Before game. Punter, Andy Wilder, number three in the nation in punting. FCS gets this one off. He averages about uh, oh, 45.2 yards per punt. That one's going to roll into the end zone for a touchback for Southern Utah University as NAU goes three and out. Scoreless in the first quarter, nothing, nothing, 8.28 mark in this very important football game for both teams. Even though it is Southern Utah's final game of the 2012 season, they're looking to knock off the 11th-ranked NAU Lumberjacks and claim the first-ever Hinton Burdick Grand Canyon Trophy. Well, this, it, you know, in many ways, their bowl game at this point. You know, they're not, as you said, they're not going to make the playoffs. They have uh, some history to knocking off some teams. Uh, two weeks ago, this team beat the number one ranked team in the country, Eastern Washington. NAU comes out 4-3 defensive lineman. Brad Sorensen is in the shotgun. First down and 10 calls for the ball. He hands it off to Hannah Brown. Angling right. Pushes it forward. Gain of about four, close to five on the play for Henna Brown, who is a six foot, 233 pound tight end slash running back out of Magna, Utah. Jared Bilbrin making the tackle for NAU. Magna up there in the Salt Lake City area. He uh, kind of adds some, some beef to that running back core hey, for, you're for you're Southern Utah. You're six feet, 233. That's a lot of beef. That's, uh, that's, a, few, that's a few cheeseburgers with a little bit of bacon added on. <laughs> you said it. You kind of want to talk there, big guy. Yeah. <laughs> you used to be. <laughs> Turkey bacon now. There you go. Second down at five. Sorensen calls for the ball on the shotgun. Coming to the near side. Almost picked off by Mike Dosen. Yeah, Dosen jumped that ball. The ball was thrown maybe a little bit late and a little bit behind the receiver. That ball was and, uh, tipped at the line. No, it wasn't. We didn't no, catch that. Let's take a look at the series history. NAU leads it 11 to 5, but. Southern Utah won here in the Sky Dome last season, 27 to 24. Every victory. This is weird. That, isn't it? Uh, you, uh, Southern Utah's had in that series has been right here in this building. These two teams. This is the fifth straight year they've played each other, but the first time as members of the Big Sky together. Sorensen, third and five, shotgun on his own 25, calls for the ball. A floater to the near side, one-on-one, -on -one, no good. Caught out or uh, incomplete out of bounds. C.J. Morgan was the intended receiver. That time Sorensen going deep to Morgan. He had a uh, an open receiver. C.J. Morgan. Crossing uh, East and Pete Pedersen, excuse me, uh -huh. was, uh, appeared to me to be open, but Sorensen kind of taking a chance downfield and it didn't work out for him. Again, the number one punt returner in the nation is Austin Shanks. That guy is Brock Miller. 
42.8 yards per punt coming in out of Solana Beach, California. Miller, a little bit of a shanker on this one, but it is going to take an NA, or rather an SUU bounce and go inside the 20, which is where you want it. And finally dropped dead at the 19-yard line. Let's take a break at the 722 mark. We're scoreless here in Flagstaff. This is the FMC NAU Lumberjack Network. From the valleys of the Grand Canyon to our majestic mountains, this isn't just any place. It's our home. And for more than 75 years, families throughout northern Arizona have come to trust the commitment of their neighbors to deliver world-class health care. A purpose that helps ensure you'll be here for your family. For heart, cancer, the unexpected, and so much more. Our purpose? You. Purchase your women's basketball tickets today by calling 928-523-5353. I'm ready to take life to a whole new level because I just picked up my first weekly winnings lottery ticket. And when I win, I'm going to get $1,000 a week for a year. Taxes paid. I know, right? That means I'm going to be hitting the trails in my new bike. I'd start doing a little traveling, like whenever I want. And I'd even have some room left to give back. Maybe help some people. But that's just me. What about you? Game on, everyone. Because you can't win if you don't play. Head coach of the Lumberjacks in his 15th season. Jerome Sowers. Career wins, 84. Career losses for him, 83. Little, little. At the moment, he's t he is third place all-time in Big Sky Conference win history. As we take a look at the total yards, 52-5, to five, and Rossert rolls out on first down and 10, comes downfield. Nick Cole catches it at the 29-yard line, and he's tackled out of the 35. That's a first down for the NAU Lumberjacks. Tackle made by Tyree Mills. That was a real nice crossing route by Coles. He did a very nice job getting open there. That's Reggie Eccleston, former... All-American wide receiver at UConn, our sideline reporter. As you take a look at uh, Nick Cole, the 6'3", 195-pound junior out of Concord, California, Clayton Valley High School. Reggie never won to uh, pass up an opportunity to give credit to those receivers. Like you, never pass, do that. like you never pass one up on the quarterbacks. <laughs> where, where do I come in on this? <laughs> First down and 10 at the 35. Grosser, handoff, Bowman, left side, not a lot of room. And guess who? Middle linebacker Zach Browning. He's one of my key players in this game. Hey, but the preceding play, a great example of NAU taking advantage of, of Southern Utah keying on Zach Bowman. The play action uh, uh, toss, get Kerry Grossard out and find those open receivers downfield. Our email inbox is open, fans. Lumberjack Talk is the uh, first part of it. Lumberjack Talk at nau.edu there it is on the screen lumberjack talk email me i've got the box open lumberjack talk at nau.edu rickert comes in motion now he sets up as a fullback snap the grosser to the shotgun he pops this one up it's intercepted at the 45 yard line and running it back nicely is tommy colette colette on the far sideline cuts it at the 10 colette into the end zone touchdown colette taking advantage of uh yeah, a ball that should have been caught, and then an outstanding run back for the Thunderbirds. There's a penalty at the end of the play. I think it may be some sort of celebratory penalty. And there you see the ball going through the hands of Ifiumotu. Colette right there to pick it off. And you can tell he's, uh, he's had a ball in his hands before as he trucks it back for a Southern Utah touchdown. That, that is the 11th interception of the season reggie eccleston yeah that's a ball if he usually catches what happened is he took his eye off it he was looking for those defenders to hit him and looking to make that first move and that's got to got to concentrate and watch that ball all the way in tommy collette that is his third interception of the season check that that penalty uh against lucky dozier of nau it'll be a 15-yard penalty to be assessed on the uh, kickoff even worse, adding insult to injury. 
Extra point attempt coming up. Here's a snap for the hold. The extra point is up, and it's good. And with that at the six-minute mark of the first quarter, we'll take a break. Southern Utah leads the 11th rank Lumberjacks, 7 to nothing. You are watching Big Sky Conference Football on the Flagstaff Medical Center, NAU Lumberjack Network. Vehicle stability control, electronic brake force distribution, traction control, and brake assist. All standard on the Toyota Corolla. But do you really need all that safety stuff? Yeah, you do. Now get 0% APR for 60 months on a new 2013 34 MPG rated Corolla. Or lease one for $169 a month. And get a lot for less. Toyota. This is Emma, and for breakfast, she's having a premium roast coffee and a sausage burrito from McDonald's dollar menu. And that's a very good decision. Now a bad decision was moving right next to the train station. No worries, Emma. You already made a good decision with a dollar menu for breakfast. The simple joy of a smart decision. distant planets. I've walked the wrong ways of Paris. I've tamed wild beasts. I've crossed gaping canyons. I've scaled Mount Everest. Wherever your dreams may take you, the right insurance company can help. Surgical. Wise financial thinking for life. And welcome back. Southern Utah getting set to uh, kick off. I need to correct myself a second time. Again? That's <laughs> unusual for you. Usually it's just once. I, I could argue it's, it's not <laughs> as unusual as you might think. That uh, penalty was on Southern Utah. They're kicking it from the 20. Which means this will be, well, maybe returnable. If Khalid Dabosky can pick it up, he does at his own 6, 10, 15, 20. And he'll get hit pretty hard, and we have a flag down on the play. Yeah, penalty came in uh, late. Reggie, any idea? Hard to see. I just saw two guys tangling up out here on the open. It's going to be a hold against uh, NAU. Against NAU. going to push them back. So, uh, you know, we talked about the first three and out for Southern Utah not being a good start. NAU off to a horrible start here. The 11th ranked team in the country down 7 to nothing to Southern Utah on an interception returned for a touchdown. Taylor Mollenfant uh, caught with a hold. And uh, that's going to push NAU back to about the 15-yard line. Again, Tommy Collette with the pick six. His that's third interception of the season this year. Really a huge play when you consider Southern Utah had to kick from the 20. Now NAU starting from their own 15. Roy Garcia is the center in for the injured Shane Monez. Rossert sets up under center. First down and 10 at their own 15-yard line for our radio listeners left to right. There's the snap, and Grosser looks immediately off to his tight end, R.J. Rickert, and fires a complete pass to him. Rickert dancing along the sidelines, tiptoe, yeah. twinkle toes, just nicely. A, just and a quick pass out to the flat, but R.J. Rickert turned it up quickly and turned it into a first down. Ten-yard pitch and catch. Rickert's not going to simply uh, step out of bounds here. He's going to take these defenders on. See the way he kind of lowered his head and his body, and well, I'm not going out of bounds. I'm going for the first down, and he got it. Ten yards of the play. NAU down seven to nothing to Southern Utah. We are late in the first quarter here on Fox Sports Arizona. I formation. Grossert under center. Play action. Deep drop. Deep pass. Caught Yamodu at about the 37-yard line. Ball came out. And the ball's on the deck. The ball's on the deck. Southern Utah says they have it. I think they do. If Yamodu struggling, trying to get additional yardage, the ball slipped out. Now there's some discussion. I think the Thunderbirds are going to have they it. They do. This is one of the best takeaway teams in the country at the FCS level. You're going to see Ife Umodu maybe get away with a, a little bit of a push off here on the reception and then uh, a nice catch and, and struggling with his big body to pick up additional yardage. Ball comes out and Southern Utah's right there to fall on. Good grief. Southern Utah leads the Big Sky Conference coming into the game with a plus 12 turnover margin. They have gained 
now 16 fumbles this season. That's the 16th fumble recovery for this Southern Utah defense. And they're in business in Lumberjack territory, right to left at the 39-yard line. Three offensive drives for NAU, three turnovers. Sorensen shotgun calls for the ball. Pressure coming up the middle, but Sorensen rolls out to the near side. Now fires into yet an, a wide open on the near side of the field receiver and overthrew him. We have a flag down. Brian Wilson, the, the last guy, if you will, for him to find checking down, was open on the near sideline in the flat, and, and Sorensen just overthrew him. Yeah, Wilson uh, kind of was out in the flat and then tucked it up, upfield, and the ball was overthrown. He's going to have a hold against Southern Utah, which would have negated a, uh, a big play anyway. That'll move the ball back at the 5-10 mark of the first quarter. Mitch Stroman along with former Lumberjack quarterback Kevin Stevens. Former UConn All-American wide receiver Reggie Eccleston's on the sideline. Our spotter today is Charlie Crownhart. Southern Utah trips up to the far side of the field. It's first down at 20 at the at the Lumberjack 49. Sorensen calls for the ball. Delayed a draw. Handoff going up the middle. Brian Wilson. And a big hit by Blair Wisher. Right Man. there to... He take, laid the leather on that one, guys. Take Wilson to the ground. Wilson coming off of a career-high 156 yards a week ago at University of North Dakota. Now, we, oh, man. We wish him one half of that uh, safety core, Lucky Dozier being the other, that has been so big for the NAU Lumberjacks all season. Out of Antioch, California, Blair Wisham, De La Salle High School. Second down, 17. Southern Utah at the Lumberjack 46. Sorensen in the shotgun. Calls for the ball. Sorensen feeling the pressure from behind. Rolls out of it, fires downfield. It'll be overthrown at about the 10-yard line. Looking downfield for Henna Brown. It was streaking down the sideline. And there you see, you, you can't give up on Brad Sorensen. Again, the receiver kind of thought he was in trouble. Slowed up a little bit. Brad Sorensen can get that ball downfield. He's got an NFL arm. Brad Sorensen has taken a beating this season also, though. 34 times he's been sacked this year. That is the most sacks allowed in the Big Sky Conference. And he has not missed a snap. He is one tough cookie. Third in a bunch. Third down at 17. Sorensen, shotgun, trips to the near side. Pressure coming off of the edges. Sorensen feels it. He throws a laser beam. Strike caught at the 23-yard line. My, no, it's going to be ruled incomplete. Easton Pedersen, I thought he had it. He I, thought he had it. I thought he did, too. Here you see the replay and a, and a great a great throw by Brad Sorensen. The ball was certainly bobbled. I think he caught that. He did. That, that's Boy, a catch. I think that's a catch, guys. I really do. On replay, and, you know, yeah. it, uh, at this level, we don't have... Uh, we don't have replay, but he got that that hand underneath. We got away with one there. I think we did there, gentlemen, in this uh, Big Sky Conference battle here between Southern Utah University and NAU. And here's the punt. High floater. Austin Shanks signals for the fair catch. It bounces at the 11 and manages to stay in and not go across the plane of the end zone. How about that one? It's going to be down at the one-yard line. First a 61-yard punt, then a 47-yarder down to the one-yard line. Our, our uh, first email coming from Bridget and Frank in Phoenix, who are very, very happy that I'm back in the broadcast booth after a little bit of a scare earlier this week. Had some, had some work done. Never missed any time, though. No. Sure haven't. Had a little bit of work done inside of my chest, and everything's going to be just fine. Here's Joy checking in. Love watching on Fox Sports Arizona. Let's go, Jax. Nine is a nice number, as in trying to go for nine wins in a row. Jax backed oh, up about man. as far as you can be here. The I formation. Hand off Bowman. Running left, and there's not a lot of room left. He's tack he maybe get a yard. Tack tackled in the end zone, but his forward progress is going to give uh, about a yard. Here we go on, uh, we're gonna see that pass play, and again, I think what the official saw was that ball approaching the ground, but again, he had his hand underneath it. it That's a catch. It went right off of the top of his hand. What a great angle and a great replay on that. Bill Ferris in our truck directing and, and, and the picking missed, that one up. The missed call really equates to a, a turnover for Southern Utah. 
they would have had a first down. Now they, now they had to kick the, the ball away. Second down and nine at their own two-yard line. Now Grosser gets up in the shotgun. Calls for the ball. Rolls out to the near side in his own end zone. He's got to get rid of that bad boy. And does. He did. He uh, knew the pressure was on. There was not an open receiver that he felt like he could get the football to. Kerry Grosser wisely throwing that ball out of bounds. Here's a shout out to you from former Lumberjack great linebacker Jake Crisop who's emailing in. He says, enjoying the game in high def in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Just inducted into the NAU Athletics Hall of Fame was Jake Crisop. Great job to you, Kevin, he writes, on getting this game set up with a trophy. I love the Grand Canyon tie-in. Now we just need to make sure it never leaves the Grand Canyon State. I love that sentiment, Jake. Thanks for the email. Lumberjack talk at NAU.edu. Third and nine at the Lumberjack two. Offset eye formation. Grossard under center, play action, roll out again to the near side. He's got to dump it off to the fullback, Jake Hess, underneath. And that's not going to be enough for the first down as he'll get out to about the eight-yard line. Kerry wanted to go further downfield uh, to a receiver that was in the uh, first down, uh, you know, area where he could get a first down and just couldn't find an open receiver, checked it down to Jake Hess. It gives him a little bit, of, little bit more room to work with, but they've got to punt the ball away. And that means... That guy doesn't have a lot of room to work with. Andy Wilder, the junior out of Scottsdale, Notre Dame Prep High School, one of 44 Arizona players on the NAU football roster. He's number three in FCS in punting. 45.2 yards. They blocked it. That one is partially blocked. And it's going to go out of the end zone. And they're going to put the hands together. That'll be a safety. And call it a safety. Man. Wilder. Watch on the replay. Now the pressure is going to come on Wilder, and he's going to step right into this one. Boom, right there. See the hand coming up on the right side of your screen. It didn't appear at first that uh, he got all of it from our angle, but the, the ball did go completely backwards and out of bounds in the end zone, resulting in a two-point safety. Southern Utah adds to their lead and will get the ball back after the free kick. Brad Meyer. The big nose tackle out of Boise, Idaho, Capital High School, 6'3", 292-pound junior. Same he, high school as uh, former Arizona Cardinal Jake Plummer. Correct you are, sir. Former Arizona Cardinal and a few ASU nuggets. Sun Devil. Got a few nuggets. Every once in a while you pull there. a nugget out. Let's uh, pull one out of the email inbox. Uh, Matt Elliott, class, NAU class of 93. Hey, Mitch, you're supposed to support the linemen. I, I do. I love the linemen. Let's take another look at that. Wow, that's that's a great effort on the part of Brad Meyer. Slicing through those three blockers. There you see Ed Lamb. He's got to be happy about this first uh, quarter of football. And now Wilder will free kick it from his own 20. Pops this one off. A pretty good one. That's a real good kick. At the 18-yard line near side. And collared and tackled it around the 29-yard line. But good that's tackle by Lucky Dozier. A good tackle by Dozier, but decent position to start for Southern Utah after getting the safety. And that'll be a 60-yard punt, free punt, free kick for Andy Wilder. As uh, NAU's defense comes back out of the field, down 9 nothing here with 2.39 to go in the first quarter. Hey, our next email. As an NAU alum, writes Todd, just curious if there are any current Lumberjack players highly touted as NFL prospects, and which previous NFL players have made it, or NAU players have made it to the NFL. Well, Travis Brown, for one, former quarterback. Um, there's several. Uh, let's see here. Dave Heisman played in the uh, played in the professional ranks. A number of Lumberjack players have played, and there's some Jeff. guys, including Zach Bowman, on the current roster who will certainly have an opportunity. Jeff Lewis. Bursting through the middle for a first down and into the secondary is number 40. Anders Battles' headgear came off. He's going to have to to step out. Blake Bailey will come in for him. Brian Wilson on the carry. And watch the hole for Wilson to burst through right there. Good acceleration. And then the helmet popping off under the new rule in college football. Your helmet comes off. The hat comes off. You come off for one play. Wilson's a tough runner. Big kid, six-footer, 206 pounds. He's a senior out of Mission Hills High School in San Diego. Hold on a minute. Flag's coming down. Reggie, what's going on down there? Looks like we got something happening. Pre-snap. False start. Ah, there it is. Number seven of the offense. Five-yard penalty. And yeah, they could have gotten uh, 49 for, for movement also, but they, they got one of the linemen. Going back to Wilson, in order to tackle him, you've got to make sure your pad level is low. And... Uh, 
wrap up. Or he's going to get by you or through you. 4.4 yards per carry, Brian Wilson. See the kid in front of Wilson, though, in the I formation? That is Lavelle Ika. He's 5'7 and 240. Moving in motion. Ika, number 49, that guy. Sorensen fires that out into the far flat. It's caught. And out to about the 44-yard line for Southern Utah is Easton Pedersen out of Highland Utah's Lone Peak High School. You're right. Firing it out there. One-step drop very quickly out to Peterson or Pedersen rather and uh, then he's just man for man on his guy a nice play to pick up you know four yards and nearly five Pedersen will come off and he'll take a look there at number 22 Marcus Alford out of Oxnard California left cornerback flags again another false start here false start. Yep. they're a little anxious full start 72 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. I that's, said five. that's referee Bruce Bondi. I said five yards on the last play. It was really 10 after the other false start. And uh, Southern Utah hurting themselves on this drive. Jeff Lewis, former uh, NAU quarterback, played with the Denver Broncos and the Charlotte Panthers. It's a good question, Todd. Lumberjack talk at NAU.edu. Let's take a look if we can see. There's the motion over on the right side of the line. Big number 72, Russell Peterson. Manti High School in Utah, Manti, Utah. Sorensen under pressure, dancing around nicely, fires that one. It is complete to Pedersen over the middle. He's close to another Southern Utah first down. You know, Southern Utah had eight receivers coming into this game with, with 18 or more catches. Really a team that likes to distribute the ball among the receivers. Right now, Pedersen getting a lot of touches. Craig Frum making the tackle for NAU, the sophomore out of Mesa Red Mountain High School. Hey guys, Sorensen is showing some real subtleties in the pocket where he's stepping, up, you know, getting some pressure, but just knowing where to step right before he throws the ball. That's pro style right there. He sets up under center of the eye formation. Wilson, the deep back. Ika, the up back. It's third down and a yard at their own 49-yard line. Snap, play action. He's going for it. Avoids the pressure momentarily. Then he goes down. Jarrett Bilbray. That should be his fourth sack of the season for the big fifth-year senior out of Bonita Vista High School in San Diego. And, and an example, again, of Brad Sorensen probably holding on to the ball uh, too long, wanting to find an open receiver downfield, and, and it just wasn't there. And on third and one, that's a, that's a big NAU sack. We'll take a break here at the end of the first quarter. 9-0 Southern Utah leads. You're watching Big Sky Conference Football in the Flagstaff Medical Center, NAU Lumberjack Network. Zach Bolden breaks it. Cuts back. Could go. Touchdown. Dedication, determination, belief. It's the foundation of our future. And the future is now. Buy seats now to see NAU play Cal Poly November 17th at 4 p.m. Call 928-523-5353 for ticket information. At Northern Arizona University, we're reaching for the stars. And I'm True Blue NAU. We're restoring our forests. And I'm True Blue NAU. It's our home away from home. And we're True Blue NAU. I'm learning to make the world a safer place. And I'm True Blue NAU. We're building the 21st Century University. And I am True Blue NAU. Shop with pride. Wear your Northern Arizona University gear on Fridays. Be True Blue NAU. Hey, Suns fans. Come out to Buffalo Wild Wings in Tempe Friday at 7 to watch our Suns as they take on the Lakers. Join us as we cheer on the Suns and be your guest bartender. Plus, don't miss out on some great ticket giveaways and prizes. This Friday at 7. The college basketball season tips off in a big way. From the flight deck of the USS Midway, Syracuse, and San Diego State, Northrop Grumman presents the Battle on the Midway. Jerome Sowers not happy. Just look at his face. You can see it. 9-0 is 11th ranked Lumberjacks are down to Southern Utah University. Here's the punt. And it's a beaut. 
And the second punt where NAU got in there. Oh, Shanks elects to field this one. Inside the 10. Inside his 10 and around his own seven or eight yard line. That is a, a 51 yard punt. Remember, Austin Shanks is coached. You put your uh, you put your heels on that 10 yard line and don't go backwards. And that time uh, he did the second second punt that Southern Utah has pinned NAU inside of the 10. Start of the second quarter here in the Sky Dome in this uh, new rivalry game for the Hinton Burdick Grand Canyon Trophy. New member of the Big Sky Conference, Southern Utah, taking on the 11th ranked NAU Lumberjacks. The Jacks now right to left across their radio dial. First and 10 at their own eight yard line. Rossard under center, takes the snap, hands it off, and there's just nowhere, nowhere for Zach Bowman to go. The junior out of Hamilton High School in Chandler is finding it very difficult. And are you going no huddle here? Picking up the pace here. No question about it. Two wise to the near side of the field. Shotgun for Grosser. Loss of two. Calls for the ball in his own end zone. Throws it out. It's caught by the tight end. Ricker spins out of one tackle. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe plus one yard. As you take a look at number 83. R.J. Rickard, another Arizona product, a sophomore, true sophomore out of Gilbert's Mesquite High School. 6'3", 230. Shotgun, quick. Third down and 10, Grosser calls for the ball. He's in trouble, and he's going to be sacked in the end zone. That might be another safety. For Southern Utah's My second safety of the game. Yeah. Although, they're going to say no. that he was not in the end zone. That's... Uh, they are saying he's down at the one yard. I Reggie, have, you're have, down on the they, field. What he, do you think? He was actually standing just out of the end zone when he got hit. The initial the hit contact took, him into took the place on the field of play. Therefore, it is not a safety. And not a lot of not a lot of argument from Southern Utah's coaching staff. And and Kerry Grosser didn't see it coming. And that's actually a good call. Very good call. Very good call. But it pins him back. It's going to be a tough punt. It's kind of the forward progress concept that. Uh, and you really benefits from there. Nabari Fentroy with the hit. And boy, does Wilder have to get this one off in a hurry. And he does. But this is going to be great field position for Southern Utah. Fielded at their own 43 and getting inside the 35-yard line of NAU to around the 31-yard line. A nice looking punt return for Griff McNabb. Wilder getting that one off very quickly, almost like he didn't get, uh, didn't get his full kick into it that time. Tell you what, Mitch, and he's got to wake up here. Southern Utah has come to play. It's like uh, NAU seems to have uh, taken a collective ambient to kind of start this game off, the 11th ranked team in the country. Playing for, if they were able to win this game, which would have to be now a comeback win, at least a share of the Big Sky Conference football championship and punching their ticket to the FCS playoffs. Right now, they're down 9-0 on their home field and not looking good. Left to right, Sorensen, shotgun, calls for the ball, hands it off out of the shotgun. This is Wilson driving forward and getting great yardage on first down to the 25-yard line. Brian Wilson, the senior out of Mission Hills High School in San Diego. Wilson does a very nice job getting north and south at the right time. That time uh, was kind of off tackle, but had a seam immediately. Jumped on it, picked up uh, seven yards on first down. Quinton Contreras you making go, a tackle who I thought was not going to play today because of an injury, but he's back in the lineup. You go second and third with Brad Sorensen, you've got an open playbook. That's exactly what it is, by the way. Second, <laughs> second down and three. Shotgun, Sorensen. Fires a pass at the five. Busted up, incomplete. Anders Battle, the junior out of Desert Vista High School in Phoenix. Really nice coverage by Anders Battle. Reggie, you had a good uh, sight on that one. Yeah, he was right in front of me. He's, he was stride for stride with him and turned his head just at the nick of time. Had he turned a moment sooner, he'd have picked that one off, guys. Got to be aware of this Southern Utah team. They only have four wins this season, but on the road, they've been tough. 28 points per game they've scored on average on the road. And they're two and three on the road. Sorensen, third and three shotgun. Steps up to his line, changes the play. Back in the gun. Wilson off the left shoulder, he calls for the ball. Wilson stays in pass pro. Into the end zone. Just off of the fingertips, incomplete. Boy, a nice throw by Brad Sorensen in stride. Would have, would have taken a great effort to come down with that ball, because it was good coverage. That's Fatou Mwala, who is a junior out of 
Keems High School, who was a walk-on, by the way, at the University of Utah in 2010. Had five catches there for the, for the Utes. Field goal attempt now. And left. this is Colton Cook. Colt, uh, Cook, a, a left Left footer. footer, left footer. They're both left footers, the punter and the kicker. This is a 43-yard attempt for Cook. It's good. Early in the second quarter, we have now extended the lead for Southern Utah. 12-0 over the 11th-ranked Lumberjacks. You're watching Big Sky Conference football on the Flagstaff Medical Center, NAU Lumberjack Network. Southern Utah, first and 10, Lumberjacks at their own 44-yard line right to left. Two wides to the near side of the field. In motion comes Deshaun Walker. Now he sets up over on the right. Play action. There's a deep drop for Grosser, and he's under big pressure. He's on the run. He's running for his life. And he takes a kind of an awkward fall forward for a gain of about two, maybe three yards. There were two receivers in the pattern, one of which, Austin Shanks, fell down. R.J. Rickert was the other one and was covered pretty well. Kerry Grosser recognized that. Uh, decided, hey, I better get what I can here. Man, that was a great move Plus he defensively was getting pressure. by Fentroy, the strong side linebacker who kind of made a nice little bit of a swim move, if you will, to kind of get in through the offensive line of NAU and crack the protection and send Grosser scrambling. Second down at eight. Grosser did the shotgun at his own 46. Two wides to the near side of the field. Grosser calls for the ball. Throws this one deep, and it's caught over the middle. 40-yard line of the Thunderbirds. Another first down for the Lumberjacks on this one. Is that Jesse Brantley? It, it is. is. Jesse Brantley is his eighth catch of the season out of Gilbert High School in the Valley of the Sun. Credit that uh, offensive line for any of you giving Kerry Grosser plenty of time to find an open Jesse Brantley. Sliding to make the catch was Jesse Brantley. 10.30 mark of the second quarter, 12-0 Southern Utah leads the 11th-ranked Lumberjacks. Grosser in the gun, two wides to the near side of the field, first and 10 at the SUU 40. He calls for the ball, he hands off the ball, running left but finding nowhere to run left. Again, Southern Utah doing a very nice job finding the ball with Zach Bowman and then bringing him down, that time stopping him, pushing him back to the point where the whistle was blown. Take a look at Zach Browning, also in on the 10 play, was Cody Larson, who is, uh, he is really good. 6'4", 300 pounds, senior out of Draper, Utah, went to Jordan High School. Preseason All-American at tackle. The Jordan Beat Diggers. Beat Diggers is one of my favorite high school nicknames ever. Beat Diggers. So it suggests to me, do they dig a lot of beats in that part of the country? I don't know. You tell me. Here's a snap. Grossert, second to 10. Comes to the near side of the field. That's caught by Austin Shanks. And rolls out of bounds at around the 34-yard line of Southern Utah. It'll be a gain of about six yards or so. Tommy Collette on the coverage and tackle. Quick throw out the flat to Austin Shanks. Boy, that was a kind of a wobbly throw there, wasn't it, from Grosser? Keep an eye open on that same play in a little uh, a little bit later on, guys, because Dejon Walker is uh, starting to make his presence known, I believe. He's... he's Getting right into those open areas. He just hasn't been seen by Grosser. Here's Walker in motion on third and four. Grosser calls for the ball out of the shotgun. He's under pressure. He's going down at the 40-yard line. My goodness, James Kowser. That's going to be his sixth and a half sack this season. A freshman out of Fruit Heights, Utah, Davis High School. And a big sack on third down because it... Uh, really removes any opportunity for a real long field goal attempt for NAU. They're going to punt this ball away and try to pin Southern Utah deep in their own territory. He plays the position that's known as rush in for Southern Utah's defensive line, and Wilder's got to kick the ball away. They're out of field goal range, even here at altitude. That's 7,000 feet. Wilder kind of tries to spin this one end over end to get a favorable bounce, but it's going to bounce into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Taylor Patton was down there as the gunner looking for the football, but it was just kicked maybe two, three yards too long by Andy Wilder, not uh, giving any you any opportunity to pin Southern Utah. 12-0 Southern Utah at the 8-14 mark of the second quarter. Back into the email inbox will go. Big shout-out to my Flagstaff NAU friends from Olympia, Washington, listening on the iPhone, plugged into my stereo, watching also the Montana State-Portland State game as well from Richard, class of 91, 96. 
psychology. Go Lumberjacks, he writes. Lumberjack talk at NAU.edu is our email inbox. Hit us up. First and 10, Sorensen left to right at his own 20 yard line. I formation. He's going to hand it off to the deep back. Wilson running right. What, what do you kind want? of bobbled the ball for just a second on the handoff. He's going to gain about a yard on the play to the 21. What do you got for me, Casey? What are you watching that Montana State game for? They're at buck 52 to 7 Ooh. on Portland State. I'd, uh, I'd turn that one off. <laughs> <laughs> In the second quarter. You know, Montana State, it's, it's scoreboard watching now time. And Montana State is one of three teams in the Big Sky with one loss in Big Sky play. Of course, the others being Eastern Washington and Cal Poly. NAU still the lone undefeated team at the moment. 52 points with four minutes in the second quarter. Benarius McGee and company. Rob Ash, they're getting it going. Sorensen fires this one out into the near flat. The Pedersen makes a beautiful move and gets out past the 30 to the 32-yard line. And Easton Pedersen gets Pe the first down. Pedersen really uh, made a move. Watch the move after the catch here. And, uh, oh. and uh, he really fooled Anders, Anders Battle, Battle there <laughs> on that one. Uh, that's a first down for Southern Utah. For our radio listeners, this is KBTK, Kachina Village, 105.1 FM, The Big Talker, and online at bigtalkerradio.com. You're also watching live on Fox Sports Arizona, throughout the Southwest, and Nash nationwide. First and 10, Sorensen fires this one out to Brian Wilson, heading out to that far side of the field, and Wilson going to be tripped out of bounds, and it'll be a short gain on the play for the... The senior who set a career-high rushing total. And real good pursuit. 156 yards a week ago. Good pursuit and contact by Devin Willis there. Playing quarterback. Robin Murray writes in, Sierra Vista says, Go Jacks, let's win today. And don't forget the show to ban. <laughs> from Robin. Robin, thanks. From down in southern Arizona in Sierra Vista. Watching on Fox Sports Arizona. Lumberjack talk at NAU.edu. Brad Sorensen. A former BYU red shirt, 6'5", 235, in the shotgun, calls for the ball. Presence in the pocket. Look at his, look at his confidence. Now he rolls out to the near side calmly and then throws the ball away calmly. More athleticism and elusiveness out of Brad Sorensen than you would expect. Uh, a big-bodied guy, uh, you think, hey, he's, uh, he's pretty much com most comfortable right there in the pocket. That time he did a nice job extending the play. Ending up throwing it out of bounds, but giving Southern Utah an opportunity. Todd in Minneapolis writes, hey guys, I'm watching the game in Minnesota. What Arizona high school produced the most lumberjack players? Wondering where Scottsdale Saguaro ranks. Thanks from Todd in Minneapolis. What do you think, K-Steve? You're a cactus cobra. I, I'm assuming he's talking about Scottsdale Saguaro. Uh-huh. Uh Here's the snap of Sorensen. He's got some pressure. He oh, fires, oh, we got contact. contact, pass interference coming. Reg, yeah, it, 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 it was not incidental, I don't think. What do you think? Well, they, they got tangled up, but uh, it was a little bit more physical than it needed to be, so that, it definitely caught him on that. The pass was incomplete, but it's going to be ruled pass interference. What, what's tough about a, you know, a play like that with Anders' battle is, you know, it really doesn't matter who initiated the contact. Their feet got tangled. Both pass players. interference. Number 19 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Again, well, I think we'll get a pretty good look here. And, and, and again, the, the well, actually, Henders Battle got that <laughs> left arm around him. And yeah, he was that was, and uh, that was a good call. Try to keep him going any deeper, so good call. We've been accused occasionally of uh, maybe favoring the guys in blue, but uh, that time. Not too often. That time, a good call. That was a good call. I formation for Sorensen after pass interference. First down to 10. The Thunderbirds are at their own 49. Sorensen under center. Drop pumps to the near side. Now rolls a little to the near side. Coming to there. More contact. Reggie, that was almost right on top of you, man. Now, again, yeah. that contact was initiated. That, that should have been offensive interference. Because, again, that contact was completely initiated by Southern Utah. That's Craig. No, rather, that's Jared Bilbray. Yeah. And now they start the clock with five and a half go to till halftime. Third down at about 14 at the Southern Utah 45. Sorensen recognizes something defensively for the Jackson, changes the play. He's in the shotgun. Two wide to the near side. He calls for the ball. Looking all the way to the far sideline. Loses his receiver who is streaking downfield. And it was underthrown just enough. 
NAU rushing seven, a full house blitz. Brad Sorn recognized that, went deep to the streaking receiver, but uh, not successfully as you see the quarterback and coach talking about it right there. Brock Miller on the punt, 5'11", 182 pounds out of Southern California's Solana Beach. The Deuce standing at his own 11. Austin Shanks. Floater, and Shanks is going to have to let this one bounce. It takes a get lumberjack it, bounce in a huge way. Now it's picked up on the run, and a couple of extra yards. Kind of a, a risky gamble by Lucky Dozier. As uh, we take a look at Lucky, Lucky, Lucky Dozier, number three in the Big Sky Conference, and passes defended. Lucky recognizing how many yards that those bounces were costing NAU, and he decided to go ahead and, and, and pick it up. But again, fortunately, he found the handle. Offense has been absolutely goose day. Here in the first half, down 12-0, 5.04 to go till halftime. That man, Kerry Grosser, in the shotgun. I said that wrong. That was helping him. That was actually helping him. Yeah. He calls for the ball. Grosser, that pressure, that. dancing. He's going to get hit, and he's going to go down to the 40. It'll be a gain of about two or three yards for Kerry Grosser. Yes, i got to wake up, too. If, if, I'm, <laughs> if I'm calling on the Jacks to wake up, you better expect a little bit more out of your analyst. Uh, you corrected yourself, though, Kevin. That's it's true. all good. If you pick up your own mistake, is it really an error? <laughs> I've always said that. I don't know, Reg. What do you think? I, <laughs> Jeff Tukuafu on the tackle. Second down at seven. NAU right to left at the road, 40. Grosser under center takes the snap, hands it off to Bowman in the middle hey, of the there field. Go, There's a little Bowman. bit of space for Zach Bowman. He'll be tackled just short of the first down marker. We haven't seen a whole lot of that right there. Zach Bowman between the tackles. Tommy Collette out of Moore Park, California. There you go, Watch see one Zach, for 20 right here. Zach Pop. Bowman and credit uh, the offensive line with creating a big hole for him to run. Makes two cuts and picks up nine yards on second down. Third and short. Jacks need this one. They need points before the half. No question about it here. 46-yard line of their own. Walker comes in motion, now sets up on the inside. Play action, roll out. Rossert, he's got trouble. He's going to have to throw this ball away. And you're right, just a, a lot of pressure by two Southern Utah defenders that time. Brings up third, or rather four, and, and very short. Midfield, no points. You, you, you maybe wonder, do you, do you take a, a little bit of a gamble and go for it here? Right now, NAU trotting their punt team out. Bring it out to Andy Wilder, the wild man. To punt the ball away with about uh, 3.50 to go. Back deep for Southern Utah, that young man, Griff McNabb. He's averaging about six yards of punt return this season. Boy, not, not a great well, kick here by Andy Wilder. Kind of off the side of his foot. Nothing seems to be going quite right for NAU in this football game with 3.45 to go until halftime, down 12 to nothing. Let's take a quick look inside of the email inbox. Hey, Todd, again, thanks for that email from Minneapolis. That was a 28-yard punt, by the way, from Wilder as we look at Ed Lamb and his fifth season. You know, Scottsdale Notre Dame prep, Todd, has uh, produced a few Lumberjack players. Here's uh, Karen checking in. Good to hear you, Mitch. And seeing the Lumberjacks at Fox Sports Arizona as we take a look again at Ed Lamb, head coach of Southern Utah. Not since the UNLV game, Mitch, has NAU been shut out in the first half. Remember the last time we were here in the Sky Dome against UC Davis, they almost were. Scored a late touchdown in that half to uh, take it into the, the locker room up 7-0. to But right now, not a lot going. Hand off out of the shotgun. And running to the left side and getting some yards, Brian Wilson. Gain of about six or seven. Again, Karen writes in, really hoping to see NAU win. If they do, would it be a tie for the Big Sky Championship? It would be at least that much, Karen. Eastern Washington lost to Southern Utah, and Montana State lost to Eastern Washington. So wouldn't NAU be the overall champ, she writes. They will if they win this game and then win again a week from now. But there's, that's a long way from now, down 12 nothing. Indeed, Brian Wilson on the carry right side of the line and gets hit pretty hard, maybe a gain of a yard as you... The, co the coaching staff for NAU has done a great job all season focusing on the game at hand. And uh, they're just trying to go 1-0 right now, as you see Wilson there on second down. Phillips and Ike. That's right there, that big hand gesture that you just saw. That was Big Chima Ike, the 5'10", 255-pound junior out of 
Walnut, California. And this is a big play right now. NAU with an opportunity to get the ball back if they can stop him here on third down. With about two and a half minutes left in the half. Both teams have all of their timeouts left. Sorensen in the shotgun. Third down and about two. Time, fired, near side, complete. First down, Southern Utah. And getting out of bounds, Griff McNabb. But we've got a flag down back on the field. Maybe a hold here against Southern Utah. It'd be about the only thing NAU could hope for at this point. Because that was a first down to McNabb. Junior out of Pocatello, Idaho. Well, that's a, that's a sharp pass. He's got it all. Holding, 68 of the offense. Ten-yard penalty, third down. It's going to negate the, fir the first down and push the ball back, make it a, a third long situation. Ed Lamb signaling in the next play. Ed Lamb is a, uh, you know, was a, was a linebacker in his playing days at, at uh, Ricks College and then at BYU. Southern Utah breaking the huddle with 2.15 and counting to go until halftime. Third down and 12 at their own 23-yard line. I formation. Sorensen sets up under center. He's going to hand this one off safely to Brian Wilson. Slamming into the right side of the line, and the right side of the line slamming him back. And he's going to take a quick timeout here to preserve time on the clock. Uh, about, well, 156 left in the half. Southern Utah will punt the ball away. And the always dangerous Austin Shanks will, uh, will be deep. Here's an opportunity now, guys, for NAU with less than two. We're going to take a timeout, first of all. Uh, with 1.56 to go until halftime, it's 12-0 Southern Utah. You're watching Big Sky Conference football on the FMC NAU Lumberjack Network. The Suns hit the road for a brief one-game road trip. They pay a visit to Utah to take on the Jazz in the Western Conference Show. Rejected by Gordon Todd. And it's all in the home of Suns Basketball, Fox Sports Arizona. While the players are locked out from the NHL, they've found other places to stay sharp. We check in with David Schlemko and Kyle Chipsura as they take the ice from the Arizona Sundogs. Hear from them only on FoxSportsArizona.com. Mom, Dad, I know this is sudden, but I'm in love. But son, how can you talk about... Macayo's enchilada fest is happening now. Enjoy an appetizer and two enchilada entrees for twenty dollars. Turning a twenty-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Mom, Dad, I know this is sudden, but I'm in love. But son, how can you talk about me? Macayo's Enchilada Fest is happening now. Enjoy an appetizer and two enchilada entrees for $20. All right, welcome back, everyone, now to our radio television simulcast. Exactly two minutes left in the first half with the 11th-ranked Lumberjacks down 12 nothing. But here's an opportunity. The punt. Will this be returnable? And a good I don't punt. think so. NAU sent two punt returners deep to try to set up something, but they're not even going to get a chance the to second, return second this. Second punt that NAU's benefited from, a, from an NAU bounce following the punt. They're going to get the ball about... About the 28-yard line and 152 left in this half for NAU to, to kind of get going offensively. They need some points. 47-yard punt for Brock Miller of Southern Utah. NAU two timeouts, 152 to go. The ball is at their own 28-yard line. First to 10, shotgun, Grosser calls for the ball. Looks near, now goes out to the far side, and again, pocket collapsing around him. Red, you're right there. You're right pretty much at the line of scrimmage. What's happening with NAU offensively in terms of their protection right now? The protection, I'll tell you, the uh, uh, Southern Utah lineman is just pushing them back, and, and that's what's causing Grosset to have to scramble really quickly. 
Second down and seven now. Grosser to the shotgun again calls for the ball. Dumps it underneath the Zach Bowman, dancing at the 35-yard line and hemmed in right there. And you with two timeouts, that clock's going to keep going here. Now a minute 20. Mike Needham on the tackle. Third down. And about three, Grossard calls for the ball to the near side to Sean Walker. He's got a fight for the first down. He does. He gets it to the 40-yard line, keeps the drive moving. He's got it. Clock will stop at 107 while they move the chains, allowing NAU to preserve the two timeouts that they have as Kerry Grossard quickly calls out the play to his receiving core. James Kowser on the tackle of Deshaun Walker. First down at 10. Again, calls for the ball. Grosser, shotgun. Pressure coming from behind. Caught from behind by Kowser. I thought maybe a horse caller. They're not going to call it there. And you may have to call a timeout here with 54 seconds left in the half. The difference in this ball game so far has been the point of attack for NAU offensively versus Southern Utah defensively. They have been more physical. They have been Along the line of scrimmage. Along the line of scrimmage. More physical. They have been more active. They have prevented NAU from really getting any offensive rhythm. And now you're taking a look at the offensive coordinator, first-year offensive coordinator, Rich Scangarello. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to make some adjustments, guys, because the linemen are just actually getting pushed right back on their heels. And, and Gross is really not having time to even set up. NAU came into this game sporting an eight-game winning streak. Their first eight-game winning streak since 1958 when they started 11-0 on the season. I mean, 54 years. And that winning streak is under severe threat. Boy, you were about the second grade back in 58, weren't you? <laughs> no, man, I was, I was just graduating from high school. Yeah, nut. 53 seconds to go. My man, Kevin Stevens. It's good to be in the booth with you, Kay Steve. It's good to be in the Sky Dome. Good to be back with you, Lumberjack Nation. It's good to be in a domed stadium here in Flagstaff yeah, it's today. A little, little bit of wind chills probably hovering around uh, 20 outside. Second down, 15, NAU. Grossard in the shotgun, his own 35 calls for the ball. Very deep drop. Pass out to the far side. Walker goes up for it, trying to get to the out of bounds. Uh, and he didn't get out, he of, didn't bounds. Get out of bounds. Gonna... They're going to run the clock here, and NAU's going to have to take their final timeout. It'll bring up third and and uh, a long 10. That ball kind of sailed just a tad. Well, he threw that ball a long ways. It was a very deep drop back by Kerry Grossert, and he went out in the far flat to Zach Bowman. And uh, by the time the ball got there, there wasn't a lot Zach Bowman could do with it. He did pick up five yards, but the worst part about it didn't get out of bounds, which uh, forces NAU to take their third and final timeout. Future NAU engineering major, fall of 2013, third generation NAU engineering family member watching the Jacks with my son, hopefully fourth generation engineering major at NAU for the class of 2032. Go Jacks from Andrew and Christian. Frank Pollock, Todd McMillan also played in the NFL to kind of go back to that theme of thinking. Renee, Renee Stewart, Renee very Stewart. long career in the NFL with the uh, Been a lot of them. Titans. Here's an email from Judy. Good luck to NAU. Bring home a win and a special shout out to the athletic training program that takes good care of our team. And also, by the way, your uh, broadcast announcer. With love from a mom in Buckeye, Arizona, watching on Fox Sports Arizona. Thanks for that email. Lumberjack Talk at NAU.edu. 41 seconds, no timeouts. Now you've got to think, hey, not only do we need to get the first down, but... Uh, got to get out of bounds. Got to get down there. Or... Shotgun Grosser, first and 10, or rather uh, third and 10 at his own 40. Calls for the ball. A little bit more time this time. Gets his feet planted. Goes into double coverage to the Deshaun Walker. And Walker had nowhere to go to even come close to that football. It'll fall incomplete. And well, NAU will have no choice here but to punt the ball away with 35 seconds to go. Yeah, Walker very, very well covered on that play. And Kerry Grosser, I don't know if he recognized that it was just good coverage because he, he out threw uh, Deshaun Walker by quite a ways. Andy Wilder's been busy in this game. Punter out of Scottsdale's Notre Dame Prep High School. Here's the snap. Wilder almost had that one blocked. 
Fair catch called for and accepted by Griff McNabb and Southern Utah. A 46-yard punt. We'll have 29 seconds and a 12-0 lead to work with here on the road in the Sky Dome playing for the inaugural Hinton Burdick Grand Canyon Trophy. Quick shout out to Taylor, Haley, and Ty who are listening from Billings, Montana. I wonder now if Sorensen will be, uh, and Ed Lamb, as head coach, will be happy to take the knee and go in with the 12-0 lead and not take any chances, or will you put that NFL arm to, to work here? Well, they're lining up in the shotgun. They you are. would think probably with uh, a 12-0 lead and deep in your own territory, you might do that. But, well. in, inside handoff to Brian Wilson. He's got a little bit of space, and he's tackled it around the 19-yard line. And that'll be the last play of the half unless somebody calls a timeout. And I don't think anybody's going to do that. Stay tuned at halftime. Reggie Eccleston on Fox Sports Arizona on the sidelines will have our coverage. On radio, it'll be uh, myself and Andrew Tomsky. Again, not since the second game of the season against UNLV have the Lumberjacks been held scoreless in the first half. We know how that game turned out. We hope, that, we hope this one will. AU has outscored its opponents 279 to 106. Third down and 12. Sorensen, high formation. Deep drop and a rifle shot pass, and it's too much. Back to the inside for the intended receiver, C.J. Morgan. It goes incomplete, and the punting unit comes out three and out for, Thunder, for the Thunderbirds. Exactly how you want to start defensively. NAU, of course, received the ball first of the game, which means Southern Utah had the first chance in the second half. A quick three and out gives NAU the football with just uh, a minute and a half off the clock. Brock Miller's done a good job of keeping the ball out of the hands of the top punt returner in the nation, Austin Shanks. Let's see if he could do it again. It's a high one, so really no opportunity for Shanks other than to die for. We have a flag down You're on the play. You're going to get an interference yeah. call against Southern Utah. What I was going to say is, is the real high punt forced Austin Shanks to, 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 to do the, uh, the fair catch, taking his big play ability out of uh, the play, but Southern Utah got too close to him, and I think NAU's going to pick up some free yardage here. 40-yard punt for Brock Miller. Penalty, though, coming. Kick catch interference, number 42 of the kicking team. 15 yards from the spot of the catch. That's see, gonna, see if we can pick it up on the replay. Fair catch was signaled, and there's the contact. Not a, not a lot of contact, but this year, a, a, a rule change. You get within, uh, I think it's a yard. You get that call. That's going to give NAU great field position just outside the 50-yard line. KC Rawlinson, the guilty party for Southern Utah. 12-0 deficit for NAU, but great drive start position left to right for our radio listeners. Grossard under center. First and 10 at the Lumberjack 49-yard line. Here's the snap and the handoff to Bowman. And he cannot get to the corner. Not even close. He'll lose a yard on the play. Zach Bowman. Boy, Again, yeah. finding the uh, the running very difficult weak side linebacker Mike Needham out of uh, St. George, Utah, making the tackle. Yeah, Needham just uh, flying to the football on that play to bring Zach Bowman down, down uh, losing a yard on the play. Zach Bowman trying to get to the outside. Needham beat him to it. Second and 11 now for NAU. Grosser goes no back, spread formation, shotgun at his own 48. Brings the deuce in motion, fakes the end around, throws it underneath a little inside screen to Deshaun Walker, dancing his way in the Thunderbird territory to the 45-yard line. That'll be a gain of about six, seven yards. They've shown that play a couple times this season, Kevin, that, that handoff on the end around on the shotgun to the deuce right there. They faked that one and get it into the hands of the big Deshaun Walker, the sophomore out of Eddie Basha High School in Chandler. Third down and a long three, close to four. At the Southern Utah 44-yard line. Trips to the near side. Now Cole moves in motion to the far side. Shotgun Grosser calls for the ball. Throws that one underneath and incomplete. Underthrown at the 40-yard line. Looking for Ify Umoti. Slant route by Ify. Ball was simply thrown uh, outside and behind Ify Umoti. Not, not really any chance to catch that ball. And NAU, after real good field position, not able to pick up a first down, they're going to punt the ball away. 
And this is as stagnant as I have seen NAU's offense this year. That includes the game up in uh, Greeley, Colorado against Northern Colorado where they had the winning on the last second field goal. they're going to get a penalty here against NAU. There's some movement along the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to get Taylor Malenfant for a false start. False start, 38 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Here's an email that says, hey, guys, enjoying the game in Gilbert, Arizona. Let's go Jacks. Win the Big Sky Conference. If NAU wins or ties for the conference title, are they bowl eligible from KC? No, NAU does not play in the uh, football bowl subdivision, Casey, or the FBS. They play in the FCS football championship subdivision. Used to be football. known as one double A. Simply put, the, the way football should be played. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go with you on that one all the way, K. Steve. I get into an absolute true tournament. And we've got more penalties before Wilder has happened to get this one off. We have more penalty flags coming down. You know, if this goes against NAU, it's, it's going to be difficult for them to pin Southern Utah like they'd like to. And uh, that's going to be the case. Well start, 83 of the offense. The, the second consecutive false start. That time, Drew Emanuel being called for movement. And we'll try it a third time. Perhaps that's the charm. Jerome Sowers at the, with the head coach headset off on the sideline. Here's a snap to Wilder. No flags down on this one, and Wilder launches a big one. And that's going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback. We've got a timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. We are just underway in the third quarter, 12-0 Southern Utah. You're watching Big Sky Conference football on the Flagstaff Medical Center NAU Lumberjack Network. A life of adventure, a life of majesty, a life facing extinction. Tiger populations have declined by 90% in the last 50 years, with more tigers living in captivity than in the wild. Big cats are disappearing at alarming rates. Don't let them fade out of the picture. Join Nat Geo Wild and Life of Pi and cause an uproar to save big cats. The Suns hit the road for a brief one-game road trip. They pay a visit to Utah to take on the Jazz in the Western Conference Showcase. Rejected by Gortat. And it's all in the home of Suns basketball, Fox Sports Arizona. Taking a look at the FCS Top 25 Big Sky participants in that particular poll. Montana State, number two, Eastern five, Northern Arizona's number 11, Cal Poly, the Mustangs, number 19 this week in the Sports Network, FCS top 25. Handoff, Wilson, right side. On first down and 10 from the 20-yard line, he'll get out about five yards on the carry for Mr. Wilson. Tackle made by linebacker Austin Haskett of the Lumberjacks. Brian writes in from Phoenix. He's watching on Fox Sports Arizona. Hey, don't forget, guys, Sean Collins had a great career in the NFL as a former NAU Lumberjack. He was. Nice, successful career playing in the National Football League. Second down at five, right to left, Brad Sorensen in the I formation, under center. Takes a snap, three-step drop, fires it out into the near flat. It's caught. That's going to be a first down out to the 33-yard line. The catch made by Fatou Moala, the junior out of Keems High School. He was a walk-on at the University of Utah. You know, down 12-0, remember, this NAU defense has, has really only uh, given up three points, a field goal, as you see Brad Sorensen firing it out to the receiver. Um, but uh, NAU giving up a safety and then a pick six. 
is really how these uh, 12 points got to the scoreboard. Two safeties. Or part one was marked off. One was marked off, that's right. I formation. First and 10 at the Southern Utah 33. Sorensen hands it off safely. Wilson cuts back into the middle of the field and looking to push and pile forward out to the 41 yard line. And Southern Utah's big offensive line pushing forward. Great, great off the snap. Jared Bilbray making the tackle. And again, you, you get uh, seven yards from Wilson on first down. And, and uh, Brad Sorensen on second down. You can, you can afford to take some chances. Sorensen changing up at the line of scrimmage on second down and two at his own 41. High formation. Lavelle Ika is the up back. He leads the way. And another first down run, Brian Wilson. Flag down as he gets to the 49-yard line, does Wilson. Let's see if we can catch the infraction on the replay. I think you're going to get a hold holding here. I think right there. If you watched on that replay, it looked like Big Daddy Tim Wilkinson was getting held. Yeah, yeah, oh, we're calling a clip. Clipping 84 of the offense. 15-yard penalty, second down. That's uh, worse than a hold for Southern Utah. Tight end Anthony Norris, the guilty party. And they'll move the ball back. Did you see the clip down there, Reg? You're pretty much uh, right uh, close to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, no, it was it was in uh, in a gang. No, I wasn't able to actually see it. I saw the hold, but I didn't see the, <laughs> didn't see the clip. <laughs> Second down and 17. Southern Utah right to left. Sorensen goes into the I formation again under center. He operated out of the shotgun primarily in the first half. Working right now under center. Dylan Fox the center. Here's the snap and a deep drop for Sorensen. Lots of time going downfield deep. Boy, and great coverage along that far sideline. Was covered by uh, both Devin Willis and uh, I think that's Blair Wisham. I see in that right. Just had the receiver blanket to check that. I think that's uh, Lucky Dozier. Along with Devin Willis covering uh, Fatu Moala. 6'2", 183-pound De junior. Devin Willis trotting off, a little banged up on the play. And uh, a big third down, an opportunity for the Lumberjacks to uh, get the ball back. Mark Thompson calling on this crowd to get involved. NAU drops back deep in coverage. Third and 17, Sorensen. Plenty of time now, no more time. He gets pulled down by Mark the Champ Thompson. Mark Thompson along with uh, Tim Wilkinson making a big play. Again, Mark Thompson's the guy who we thought blew his knee out a week ago at Idaho State. I, I remember walking in the parking lot next to him. He was crutches, could walk, and here he is uh, seven days later making a big play on third down. He likes to be called the champ. See the hair? It's the best hair in the Big Sky Conference. Fourth down, and the punting unit is out. Brock Miller, the punter, and the deuce is back at his own 27. And he was going to set up for the return. Miller floats this one very high, and uh, Austin Shanks has no choice but the fair catch it at his own 34-yard line. We'll keep it right here at the 932 mark on a 42-yard punt from Brock Miller. NAU down 12 to nothing, the 11th-ranked team in the country with an eight-game winning streak on the line against Southern Utah and also the inaugural Hinton Burdick. Grand Canyon trophy. These two schools separated Cedar City and Flagstaff by the Grand Canyon, obviously, and about 287 miles. Pretty easy drive from here to Cedar City. How long did that take you usually, Kevin? <laughs> uh, yeah, you thought I was going to catch you. Out of the shotgun, Grosser calls for the ball. He swings it out. This is Zach Bowman. And before he could get a whole lot of yards, he gets cut down on the near side of the field, and a gain of one, maybe two. J.T. Anderson out of Layton, Utah, making the tackle as Jerome Sowers looking understandably concerned as Zach, his offense has just simply not been able to generate much of anything. Zach Bowman just uh, 22 net yards rushing. Of course, that was a reception in the first half. 
been a, a hard go right now for Zach Bowman in this offense. Second and eight, play action, deep drop, Grossert. Fires this one to a wide open if you won't do at the Thunderbird 45 yard line. He's tackled at the 38 yard line. First down, Lumberjacks. A perfectly thrown football by Kerry Grosser. The play action bought him some time. The offensive line helped him out. Nifi Umodu running a nice route. Ball thrown accurately and on time. A big play for the NAU offense. Reg, what'd you think? You like that one oh, from your, your guy there, Ify Umodu? Absolutely. That's what they've been needing, though. It's a perfect, good protection for him. Grosset really laid into it on that one. Jesse Brantley is now into the game. He sets up with the inside receiver on the far sideline. Tight end Rickard goes in motion. First and ten. Grosset hands it off. There goes Bowman left side. This yeah. time he's got space. And that's a first down run for Zach Bowman. That's his longest run of the day so far. A gain of about 11 yards. And I think probably the first time this NAU offense, with maybe the possible exception of the first drive of the game, now inside of the 50, approaching the red zone at the 26-yard line as you see Zach Bowman deliver the punishment at the end of that play. I wonder, I, I did see Ify Umodu come kind of hobbling off a little bit, and he has been nursing a pretty badly sprained ankle. Hopefully he's okay. First and 10 now, Jack's at the Thunderbird 26-yard line. Fake an end around. Is setting up the screen to Bowman. Bowman to the 25, to the 20. And that'll be a gain of about six yards. It was a fake double fake. Yeah, double on play the end action around. on that. And then uh, going back underneath to Zach Bowman to what amounted to, to kind of a screen pass. It was a screen. You saw it getting out in front of the Kyle Walker, Joe Gursky over on the left side of the line. And NAU is now officially in the red zone. Second down and three at the 19-yard line. It's going to be a handoff to Bowman. Bowman tries to cut back inside of the 20, and he does so, and he gets yardage for a first down to the 15-yard line. First down, Lumberjacks. Did you see that patience, guys? He hesitated and was able to make that little cut back to the left and then back upfield. That's why he got that first down. That classic Zach Bowman, a combination of patience, strength, and speed. Bowman gives the Jacks a first down. They're deep in the red zone. NAU in the red zone this year. 11th in the Big Sky Conference in conversion into points. That's 81%. This team defensively, Southern Utah, number two in the Big Sky, and stopping teams from playing, scoring in the red zone. That's 76%. Ball and off Bowman, right side. Kerry Grossert bobbled that, uh, that football. Fortunately, he was able to find the handle and get the ball just in time to Zach Bowman. This could have been dangerous. Difficulty between the center quarterback exchange there, you see. And your heart uh, certainly skips a, a beat there. Good recovery by him, though, to still be able to hand that ball off to Zach. Second down and seven now. NAU, the ball is at the Southern Utah 12-yard line. Their best scoring opportunity of the game so far. Shotgun, Grosser. Bowman off the right shoulder. Grosser calls for the ball, looks right, goes inside. The Deshaun Walker at the 10. Stays on his feet inside the 10 to the 6-yard line. That's going to be close depending on the spot. Going to be about a yard short of the first down. He's a little short, but that was great concentration. The ball was actually tipped when carried through it. and uh, But he still made that catch. And we've got a Southern Utah player down, and, and we'll take a break as they look at James Kowser. 6.15 mark of the third quarter, 12-0 Southern Utah. This is Big Sky Conference football on the FFC NAU Lumberjack Network. At Northern Arizona University, green is a school color and who we are. Being green creates jobs. Money put back in the economy. Being green is recycling resources. The same prize that power our students, power Northern Arizona. Being green shapes our future. Through research and education, we will make a difference. At Northern Arizona University, sustainability is a principle we believe in. Northern Arizona University, the difference that matters. Zach Bowman breaks it, cuts back, could go, touchdown. Pride, dedication, determination, belief. It's the foundation of our future. And the future is now. Buy seats now to see NAU play Cal Poly November 17th at 4 p.m. Call 928-523-5353 for tickets. 
I've been a firefighter here for almost 12 years. These guys are my family, and they can count on me for anything. Here we are at Whataburger, picking up breakfast at the fire department. Thank you. They're going to have a good hot meal. They're hungry. Come on, boys. Chow time. Oh, they tear it apart. we got to feed the machine. we got the breakfast on the button, the keto. It's all I need to serve. <laughs> what motivates me is their appreciation. Sharing breakfast with them. That's what makes me happy. Welcome back. Now watch on the replay. There's the ball was actually tipped at the line of scrimmage. You know, maybe the second time I've seen Dejon Walker today with the ball where I would have liked to maybe seen a little more north-south. He took a, a little bit of step at the end. I thought he maybe could have got a yard or two just third and, it in there. Third and one for the Lumberjacks. Hand off. Zach Bowman first down, running left. He's inside the five. And Ify Umodu is trotting back out on the field. That's good to see. He has been battling a... A sprained ankle now for a several weeks. A big first down conversion. And that's another one. For NAU, gets them a first down at the three-yard line. They need a touchdown here with uh, under six minutes left in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. I formation. This is NAU at first and goal from the three. Yamodu and Cole are the wideouts. They're going to throw this one a fade in the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Ify Yamodu! The Lumberjacks are on the board at the 540 mark of the third quarter. Great throw, and what an adjustment by Ify while the ball was in the air. Perfectly set up. A little bit of contact between uh, the receiver and the, and the defender, but we'll certainly take that. A ball that uh, may have been intended to throw a little bit behind the receiver, Reggie. Yeah, that was planned. He definitely planned that. He saw that the, the uh, defensive back had his back to him, and he could just stop him easily like that. Andy Wilder on to attempt the extra point. The holder, Bachelier, sets it down. The kick is up. The kick is good, and it's all good at Granny's in Flagstaff. We'll take a timeout. 540 mark of the third quarter. Score, Southern Utah 12, the 11th-ranked Lumberjack 7. This is Big Sky Conference football on the FMC NAU Lumberjack Network. Vehicle stability control, electronic brake force distribution, traction control, and brake assist. All standard on the Toyota Corolla. But do you really need all that safety stuff? Yeah, you do. Now get 0% APR for 60 months on a new 2013 34 MPG rated Corolla. Or lease one for $169 a month. And get a lot for less. Toyota. This is Emma, and for breakfast, she's having a premium roast coffee and a sausage burrito from McDonald's Dollar Menu. And that's a very good decision. Now, a bad decision was moving right next to the train station. No worries, Emma. You already made a good decision with a dollar menu for breakfast. The simple joy of a smart decision. Over the last five years, Kia has been the fastest growing car company in America. It's because we've redesigned our entire lineup to be better than ever before. And because the Optima is the most appealing mid-sized car. Plus, the Soul was ranked highest in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. In other words, Kia is America's fastest growing car company for good reason. So come in today to see all that Kia has to offer. And right now, lease the 2013 Optima LX for $199 a month. Joe Gursky, and uh, that, that's a big leg that's being stretched out, and he does not look like it is comfortable. The sophomore, he's a third-year sophomore out of Valley Center, California. Played seven games last year at right tackle, red-shirted in 2010, and 6'5", 315 pounds. He now plays left tackle for the Lumberjacks as the uh, Ryan Hawkins kick goes out of the back of the end zone. Gursky's missed a couple of games early in this football season. The ASU game and the, and the UNLV game. They need uh, they need that big body back in there. See how Ed Lamb and the Thunderbirds respond now to allowing a touchdown to be put on the board when they're looking still at Gursky. Here's an email that says, good afternoon. I like that, very formal. Sherelle White, 2010 NAU graduate here. Good to see Fox Sports Arizona showing the game live. What do you think NAU's postseason will like? Go Jacks from Window Rock, Arizona on the Navajo Nation. Well, they're going to need to win a couple of games here, at least this one for sure. Shotgun, Sorensen, 
calls for the ball, throws this one, caught, nice look and throw and catch, rolling for the catch out to the 32-yard line, short of the first down. But anyway, McNabb, a nice looking play. No relation, I think, to Donovan McNabb. Quick but, but inside she, post uh, from an inside receiver. Ball was thrown on time and very accurately to Mike, pick up seven yards on first down. Mike Dosen, the tackle. I'll tell you what, Sherell, NAU has to win this game. If they do, they're going to punch their ticket to the playoffs. If they win both of their games, they're going to probably very likely host a game. At least, I like that prospect. Sorensen throws this one underneath. That's going to be a first down for the Thunderbirds. A couple of quick passes, short but accurate and sweet. This is C.J. Morgan on the reception. And the tackle made again by Mike Dosen, along with Craig Frum of the Lumberjacks. As you take a look at C.J. Morgan out of Aurora, Colorado. Transfer Morgan is from the University of Wyoming's Cowboys program. First and 10, Sorensen shotgun now. He worked under center the first two series of the second half. Now he's back in the gun. At his own 38, calls for the ball. Pressure coming off the edge. And Sorensen throws a lightning bolt to the near side at the 40-yard line. It's a short gain of two yards to Morgan. But I love the way he got rid of that ball in a hurry when the pressure was coming off of the edge from Anders Battle. Yeah, NAU uh, brought pressure from the opposite side. And... Uh, Brad Sorensen zipping it out there to the flat. Second down and about eight yards now for SUU out of Cedar City, Utah. At their own 40, Sorensen setting up the screen. NAU really bid on this one. We have a flag down on the play. Holding. Brian Wilson gets it in the Lumberjack territory to the 47, but we do have a flag down. NAU came with that dog blitz. Brandon Phillips uh, timed that one, I think, perfectly. I'm not sure who the penalty's going to be against. But they got caught with a screen pass. The official takes a couple steps back. Holding 52 of the offense. 10-yard penalty, first, second down. That's Dylan Fox, who is 6'2", 286, and a senior out of Cedar City, Utah. Craig Frum and Brandon Phillips. Uh, yeah. And the ball was, I think, tipped by Mark Thompson, but, but still caught. Fox caught with his hands very deep in the cookie jar of holding. Second down at 18. Shotgun, Sorensen right to left at his own 30-yard line. Two wides on both sides of the field. He calls for the ball. In pressure, down he goes. They got him that time. Brad Sorensen that time just did not have the time to dance in the pocket and find that extra couple of seconds. Yeah, Mark Thompson... Jared Bilbray and Tim Wilkinson all there, and you can add Brandon Phillips. Guys, and you can kind of turn it up as this defense calls for the crowd to get involved on third and very long. It's been the defense all season long that has led, really, this Lumberjack football team to eight straight wins after getting shellacked at ASU to open up the season. The defense has been primarily responsible, sparking four second-half comebacks. Shotgun on third and about Williams. What a throw! First down, no short. C.J. Morgan short. A nice pitch and catch. A post pattern of a skinny post thrown by Brad Sorensen. That offense is staying out there. They may go for it here on fourth and short. Fourth and four. Now, now they're trotting the punt team out. A nice pitch and catch. Andrews battle on the tackle. That was a good looking route by C.J. Morgan there, Reg. Oh, very good route. He ran it perfectly. Nice little skinny pose, but the throw was just absolutely magnificent. Punter Brock Miller will boot it in the direction of Austin Shanks. The deuce. NAU is going to set up for the return, and uh, Miller's punt is a big one. Oh wow, boy. what kind Great of a crazy bounce, bounce did that oh take? No. It goes in. It almost did not break the that plane of the end zone. There. 2 18 to go in the third quarter, and the Lumberjacks have a chance now, down 12 to 7, to put together some more offense here, sparked by uh, just a fine defensive stand for NAU. Andy Thompson, the, the defensive coordinator for this Lumberjack football team. And again, NAU with four second-half comebacks out of their eight wins this season. They're going to try to do it again, this time at home. 
Rostered under center, first down and 10. In motion, Rickard, now he sets up on the right side. Hand off, Bowman dancing around, now banks out to the far side and has nowhere to go. Nice, beautifully done coverage on Zach Bowman. Good, good open field coverage on him. And you see number 31, JT Anderson, wrapping up Zach Bowman on the play for Southern Utah. Good open field tackle, gain of one for Bowman. 150 and counting in the third quarter. NAU down by five. Second down and nine at their own 21. Shotgun Grosser, he calls for the ball. Drops deep, now he's on the run, and he's not going to escape the pressure. He'll be sacked back to the 15-yard line. Kerry Grosser recognizing the pressure and dipping his shoulder, getting what he could, but still giving up five yards on the sack. Makes it tough. Now a third and 15. Corey Jones. A sophomore out of Converse, Texas. We'll see Coach Jerome Sowers frustrated with, with the sack. Knows your chances of converting on third down go down significantly when you're third and 15 versus a third and nine or third and 10. Cold to the near side, two wides to the far side. Rickert in motion. Shotgun Grossert, third and 15. Calls for the ball. Pressure coming, throws this one down the seam to Rickard, and it is overthrown and incomplete. He was getting pressure, and there was good coverage downfield. He was going to R.J. Rickard there on the hash. And that's the type of, of defensive play we saw out of Southern Utah in the first half of this football game. Putting good pressure on Kerry Grossert and, and it, extending good pass coverage downfield, Reg. They're, they are really doing a fine job, Southern Utah's pass defenders, of recognizing where the ball's going. Yeah, they are. They're very focused and honed in right now. Uh, they're doing that little bracket coverage on the tight end on that play, and uh, you know it would have been a perfect pass to get in there. Fair catch signaled and accepted by McNabb at the 30-yard line. That's a 55-yard punt from Andy Wilder, and there are 47 seconds left in the third quarter. NAU down 12-7. Pizza for our TV crew here in the Sky Dome is provided by Pizza Furiosa, the Hilltop Shops, Woodlands Village, West Flagstaff, Chef Richard Fernandez, open daily 11 to 9.30. Hey, Mitch, writes Rebecca, we've loved the Lumberjacks this season. Go Jacks, a special hello to our favorite uncle, assistant coach David Reeves, love from San Diego, Sadie, Lily, and Nate, to Lumberjack Talk at NAU.edu. Thanks for the email, San Diego. First and 10 at the 30. Shotgun Sorensen play action. Pressure coming. Sets up the screen over on the far side of the field. And look at him race to the far sideline for a first down. That's Hannah Brown on the reception. Brown just uh, making some moves, making some people miss, and picking up a couple of blocks to pick up the first down on first down. Southern Utah came into this game with just four wins. But when you look at their losses in Big Sky play, losses by seven points, five points, two points, four points, well, they have been close in all of their games. Win or lose, first and 10 at the 42. Hang on. This may be a false start. Mitch, I, will, I would add to that the last four times this, these two teams have played, they've all been close. Uh, sometimes false start. Up. Number seven offense, five-yard penalty. First down. Sometimes coming down to the very last play of the game. Hannah Brown being the uh, guilty party on the false start, and we may or may not be able to get the playoff before the end of the third quarter. Down now to 15 seconds and counting on the clock. Southern Utah does not have to, and they look like they're just going to let this thing roll down to the triple zeros on the Sky Dome clock, so we're going to take a break. Fourth stanza of this battle for the inaugural Hinton Burdick Grand Canyon Trophy will be back after this. 12-7 Southern Utah leads. This is Big Sky Conference football coverage on the Flagstaff Medical Center NAU Lumberjack Network. From the valleys of the Grand Canyon to our majestic mountains, this isn't just any place. It's our home. And for more than 75 years, families throughout Northern Arizona have come to trust the commitment of their neighbors to deliver world-class health care. A purpose that helps ensure you'll be here for your family. For heart, cancer, the unexpected, and so much more. Our purpose? You.
To my tribe, to my tribe. I'm more than a student. I'm an example that is possible to get an education. Education can end poverty, violence, and health issues on the res. On the reservation, tribal students find ways to turn their education into an entire tribe's education. Even when only 5% of Indians on the reservation, on the reservation only 5% of Indians can afford to go to college. If I do nothing, 25,000 people will continue to live in poverty. I will help 2 million people educate themselves. I'll keep 173,000 people from losing their sacred home. Hey! And welcome back, Ed Lamb, the head coach of Southern Utah. They jumped out to a 12-0 lead over the 11th-ranked Lumberjacks. They're trying to hang on on the road. Sorensen out of the shotgun, left to right. He's got his man 40, far sideline, first down. Look at the nice cutback move. And Southern Utah's into Lumberjack territory on a pretty move by the wide receiver, Fatou Moala. Anthony Hughes for NAU had what appeared to me an opportunity to catch that football. Could not quite get to it, and uh, kind of took mm. a gamble on it. Lost that gamble and Good gave move up a there. big play. Nice move, nice cutback move to get himself another eight or so yards. Moala, first to ten, Thunderbirds at the Lumberjack 41, left to right. Shotgun, Sorensen, pressure coming off of the edges. He calls for the ball. He tries to move into the middle, and there's nowhere to go. He's going to be sacked, and down he goes. Mark Thompson was there. Looks like I see Quinton, no, Jarrett Bilbray there as well. And a big sack for NAU. Remember, Southern Utah entered this game giving up 34 sacks. That's a, that's a lot. And that time, the big bull rush by Tim Wilkinson. and uh, Of course, it was Bilbray and Thompson who got to him. But that defensive line coming up big right now for these Lumberjacks. Sorensen changing up the play at the line of scrimmage. Second down and a dozen at the Lumberjack 43. He's in the gun. Calls for the ball. Hands it off on the inside. Out of the shotgun. Running left. Running very little. One yard gain on the carry for Hannah Brown. And there's a right, man. Get on your feet and make Looking your great. In the Sky Dome, good to have me back in the saddle. An email coming in from Anya. Thank you, Anya, for that. It is good to be back in the saddle. Tim Wilkinson trotting off. Mark like Thompson says, come on, fans, get on your feet and make some sound here in the Sky Dome. It's third down and 11. Big Southern Utah, right the 42 of the Lumberjacks. Sorensen shotgun, two wides, both sides. Slow Low snap. snap. Sorensen picks it up, fires it out to the far side. It's caught by Brown, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds before he could even think about turning and heading to that first down marker. And a good play by Blake Bailey. No, I'm, I checked that. That's uh, Blair Wisham right there to bring the, the receiver down, get him out of bounds, and not give up the, the first down. Southern Utah appears to be going for it here on fourth down and about four. Fourth and four at the Lumberjack 35. Southern Utah, 6 of 11 this season on fourth downs. Sorensen now sets up under center. And I'm going to predict that they're going to call a timeout here. Ed Lamb kind of walking over there. Maybe trying to draw him off, but they're not. Sorensen's not at the line of scrimmage. So for a moment, Offense. it looked like penalty. Ed Lamb was going to roll the die. Didn't take the timeout but uh, not willing to kick a long field goal there. Ed Lamb knew, hey, I could go ahead and, and line him up, give up the penalty, and still punt the ball away. That'll move the ball back a couple of yards. And perhaps maybe even give him some more you know, room to operate and uh, in their mind's eye, try to pin NAU deep in their own territory. Silver City, New Mexico, checking in on Fox Sports Arizona to the email inbox. You guys do a fabulous job. Girl, go Lumberjacks. From Granny in Silver City, Kyron Poe's Granny. Kyron Poe out of uh, Hamilton High School, wide receiver now, former quarterback. Here's the punt, trying to kind of pooch this boy. That's Brock it. Miller, he does a nice job of it. Oh, did they keep it in? No, oh, they, in. the that's ball it. stayed in. But the, uh, the Southern Utah players stepped in the end zone 
before they knock that ball out, it's going to be a touchback. Great effort by Southern Utah special teams to try to keep that one from going into the end zone. And again, NAU's defense leading the way here for the Lumberjacks to try to come back here down 12 to 7 of the fourth. Now watch how fast this ball just shoots toward the end zone. There you can see the Southern Utah player is in the end zone knocking that back. Just a matter of inches there. Good effort, though. First and 10, Lumberjacks at their own 20. I formation, Grossert under center. Takes the snap, flag is down. Hand off, Bowman dancing into the middle of the line of scrimmage. He'll gain about two, maybe three. But Reg, that flag came down pretty quickly. It's going to yeah, be an illegal yes, shift. It, it, exactly, Kevin. Uh, if he backed up off the line, and the motion man never got on the line. So. Reg, that's a, that's a discipline Illegal issue. Illegal shift. Got to be aware Number of eight the, the offense. Field. Yeah, absolutely. Five yard penalty. Absolutely. First. That's tough on first down. You Coach, see that? You that see that Coach Sowers right there yeah. frustrated. No, he's not happy with that. Coach Sowers not happy with that. Again, that's a penalty on the preceding offensive possession for NAU made it difficult for them to convert on third down. And then here on first down, an additional penalty. Ed Lamb looking on. Looking for his second win in a row over NAU. They beat the Lumberjacks here in the Sky Dome at the end of last season. Play action. Rosser, lots of time this time, but he has nobody to throw to. And he'll be hit from the blind side. How much time did he have in the pocket, Kevin Stevens? Plenty of time and just good coverage downfield. There were two receivers out in the pattern. Nick Cole and R.J. Record, neither one of them open, at least open enough for Kerry Grosser to deliver the football. That is probably the most time that Grosser has had to stand in the pocket without having to move one way or the other and survey the field for somebody open, and there was nobody open. Credit that coverage by the Thunderbirds secondary. Second down at 22. The ball is at the Jack 8 under center. Grosser is going to hand this one off to Zach Bowman. Bowman up the middle, gets some yards, but not even close to getting to the original line of scrimmage. No, but makes it uh, at least a little bit more manageable on third down. Tyree Mills, the junior out of Pasadena, California, making the tackle. And Zach Bowman's gonna gonna come out of this game. Well, you know he didn't practice much this week at all. He uh, battled strep throat, and he is uh, he has been the target of the Thunderbird defense all day long, and they've done a good job of hitting the bullseye. Third down at 14, NAU at their own 60. Grosser calls for the ball in the shotgun. A little bit of time this time, looking for Yomodu. Did Yomodu catch it? He does. We have a flag and, down. And at the 39-yard line, Very it's great. more than enough for a Lumberjack first down. Well, we got a flag being tossed on the play. Yeah, and that's really going to be nice defensive interference. If be Yomodu to get down and catch that football that was thrown a little bit low, the penalty's going to go against Southern Utah. Uh, a pass interference. Pass interference. 31 of the defense. That penalty is declined. First down. Reg, a really nice job getting down, securing that football to pick up the first down. Yeah, he did. It was a great throw, and Iffy went down there and got it and really secured it. Even though he was pushed from behind, he still was able to come up with that catch. High formation now for the Lumberjacks, first and 10 at their own 39 yard line. Rickard comes in motion to the near side, now sets. Grosser takes the snap. Hands it off to Bowman. Hand Bowman gets just spun around and he grabbed by the ankle. Then all the other white shirts came in and he'll lose a yard. And you just not having a lot of success on first down here. Not, having, it, not having a lot of success running the football, generally make, speaking. Yeah, it really makes it difficult on this offensive staff, their play calling. Second and 11 is a lot different than second and three or four. NAU sends out two wides to the far side of the field. On second and 11 at their own 38-yard line. Grossert is under center. Bowman the lone setback. Hand off to Bowman again. They're going to dip into that well, and they are going to find that the well is dry. Maybe two yards on the carry. They are not able to run this football against this tough Southern Utah defense. Mike Needham out of Desert Hills High School in St. George, Utah, leading the way. Now, third down conversions are, are hard enough. When you're constantly do it from 10 or 12 or 15 yards, your percentage goes down significantly. Eight and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter with the 11th ranked Lumberjacks down 12-7.
And look at it, third and long at their own 40, right to left. Cole on the near side. Grosser calls for the ball. Throws this one up over the middle. Yamoto catches it at the 43-yard line of the Thunderbirds. First down, NAU. The second consecutive third down where Ify Umodu comes up big. And on that play, he went up high to come up big. Yeah. There you see a th ball thrown just You know just I have to comment on that real one, man. High. That the receiver goes up. This kid, is he's got all the tools. Big body can jump to the moon and has great hands. What a catch. And that was a very impressive catch by Ife Yamodu. First down and 10, NAU. Into Thunderbird territory at the 39. Bowman handing off, going right and going nowhere. They're trying still to establish some respect for the run game, and Southern Utah is simply not able to lose respect. I mean, there's, they're, they're attacking. Uh, and, and they are holding Zach Bowman in check and not allowing him to do what he does so well when he bounces back in the opposite direction. They're doing an outstanding job, Southern Utah, is along that uh, front seven defensively. You wonder if NAU will start to take some shots downfield on first and second down. Point taken, partner. Second down and 11 at the Thunderbird 40. Here's a play action. Here's a shot to the near side. Wide open, Nick Cole. That's first down Lumberjacks to the 26-yard line of Southern Utah. J.T. Anderson on the tackle. A good play action. Gave Nick Cole some time to get uh, out and open. They're doing some great combination routes now, guys. That's why they're getting so wide open. It's almost similar to picks without touching the guy, but that's why you're seeing them wide open like this now. You can nice. you sense the offense picking up a little bit, a little bit of rhythm through the passing game. Shotgun Grossard, first of ten of the Thunderbird. 26. Grossard calls for the ball. Very deep drop. Floats one to the near side of the field, and it is out of bounds. It was intended for the deuce. But he was coming. He was already out of bounds by the time that ball arrived on the scene. And Tommy Collette actually made a Made a little bit of a play there for another pick. Austin Shanks was open early, but the ball kind of floated on him and uh, allowed the defender to, to come back and make a play on it. Good point, Kevin. He was open uh, quickly, you know, off the line, but the, the ball was just floated a little bit too much. Trips out to the far side of the field. Zach Bowman split out to the near side. Second down and 10 of the 26 of the Thunderbirds. Spread formation, no backs. Grosser in the shotgun. Calls for the ball. And we've got flags stopping everything. Now, there's more yellow flags on the turf than you could possibly count. They all came out of everybody's pocket. False start. 7-2 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Trey Gillio, the fifth-year senior at right tackle out of Kingman High School. It's Jerome Sowers. More offensive penalties, especially what I would consider unforced penalties, false starts, uh, shifts, things that can uh, easily be prevented from NAU that I can remember seeing this season. Shotgun Grossard on second and 20. No, it's not second and 20. Second and about uh, 16. Ball's at the 36. Grossard calls for the ball. Dumps it underneath the Bowman at the 32. He's at the 25. He's at the 20. And he's upended inside the 20. Very close to another Lumberjack first down. Got it to 34 in space and gave him an opportunity and they got to do something with down. it. First down, Lumberjacks. Zach Bowman, a very talented receiver as well. He Picking secures the ball. Picking up a nice block from Joe Gursky, who was uh, struggling with that knee earlier. Good to see him back out there at left tackle. First down and 10. And again, Bowman. Singled out on the near side. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. Grossert tries to get it to Bowman. A similar play to the previous one, but the ball was a tad underthrown and goes incomplete. And Southern Utah with a good push defensively, and I think just the timing was off on that play. Bowman came into the game with 24 catches for a touchdown. And, and you've noticed in the last couple of formations, number 34 setting up as a single wide receiver. Now he stays in the backfield off the left shoulder. 
of Grosser. Six minutes left in this game. NAU needs a touchdown here. Trips out to the far side. Second down and 10 to the 16-yard line. Grosser calls for the ball. Again to Bowman at the 17-yard line. Dancing his way. Gets inside the 10. Close to the 9. Short of the first. I tell you what, I got to give credit to this Southern Utah defense. They are tackling Zach Bowman. NAU had the right play on. Got the ball quickly out to Zach Bowman. And Southern Utah getting to the football. And when they do, they've done a great job getting the ball carrier down. Third Huge down. play. This is as big as it gets right now in this game. Third and four. Maybe At two the Southern territory. Utah 10. Hand off to Kovad Dabosky Johnson. He's going to gain a yard, maybe two, and, and he's short of the first. And now a really tough decision. NAU's going to call a timeout to give them additional time to consider what they want to do. And they're going to take a timeout. We will as well. 5.19 to go. It's 12-7 Southern Utah. This is Big Sky Conference football on the FMC NAU Lumberjack Network. Blimpy has been a part of America's tradition for over 40 years. Our subs are made with fresh baked breads. Quality meats and cheeses sliced to order. Taste the difference freshness makes. Blimpy, America's sub shop. I just graduated to full-on gamer. And it's all because of this little baby right here. With this weekly winnings lottery ticket, I could win $1,000 a week for a year. Taxes paid. Then put me on the greens like every weekend. I take the whole family to someplace tropical. I'd even put some away for the kids' college. But that's just the start. What would you do? Game on, everyone, because you can't win if you don't play. Jerome Sowers, 5.19 to go, down by five on your home turf, and you're looking at fourth down and two. Kevin, Reggie, what do you think, guys? I think it's the right call here. Absolutely. On fourth and short, you need a touchdown with 5.19 left in the game. This is what championship teams are made right here, Mitch. Shotgun formation in Walker. Walker is in motion. Grosser calls for the ball. He's going to pass it. It's caught underneath the record. There it is. Touchdown! There it is. That's what you do RJ as a championship Rickert. team. That's what a champion does. They Maybe needed a couple of yards for the first. Instead, they get the touchdown. Maybe not a bigger offensive play for this NAU team this year as uh, Kerry Grosser finds R.J. Rickert on fourth down. He catches the ball at about the three, and then big R.J. Rickert turns around and earns that touchdown. I like right. the way Carey stood in there and really delivered that ball, too, guys. They're going to go for two here and delivered it. to try to extend the lead to three. Two-point conversion upcoming. Yeah. Yeah. They've got to hustle it up. Four seconds, four seconds. Three, two, one. They've got to take the second timeout. I don't waste the timeout there. I go, well, I, I take the penalty. We're, we're going to take a timeout as well. We need a break. 5.14 to go. 13-12 Lumberjacks lead. This is Big Sky Conference football on the FMC NAU Lumberjack Television Network. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new maze record. Really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. 
Only Mazda is so obsessed with the future of driving that it's revolutionizing everything. Sky Active technology makes vehicles stronger with two top safety picks and more fuel efficient, like the 40 MPG Highway Mazda 3 and the 2013 Mazda CX-5. No compromises. We build Mazdas. What do you drive? The Mazda 3 is now available with attractive lease and finance offers, but only for a limited time. They're going to go for it. Here, our two-point conversion. The Jacks with 5.14 to go on the clock. Tough to see NAU take a timeout. They're second of the half, leaving them with one on a two-point conversion. They're going for two. We'll see later on within the next five minutes how important that timeout is. Rossert in the shotgun. Calls for the ball. Dances, throws it underneath, wide open. Two-point conversion to the deuce is good. Reggie Eccleston. Hey, guys. That was a good-looking pat pitch and catch to the deuce. I, I tell you what, this is what champions are made of, guys. There was no hesitation. They were very, very precise on those two plays. You know what? The, the enthusiasm down here right now is just tremendous. Look for the defense to turn it up a notch. These guys can smell it now. The timeout allowed NAU to, to talk it over and get the exact right play on the two-point conversion. And for the second consecutive play, Kerry Grossert finds an open receiver Look at right there in the middle of the field. That time, Austin Shanks for two points. The play earlier, R.J. Rickard for six. Something broke down defensively for Ed Lamb's Thunderbirds that have Austin Shanks coming so wide open for the two-point conversion. This is another look at the touchdown to R.J. Rickard. And remember, on fourth down, NAU doing a great job. See how they're starting to exploit the middle. They, they opened up with some of those longer passes, but those were more towards the middle of the field, too. They've been working the sidelines most of the game, and now all of a sudden they're hitting those middle portions. An eight-game winning streak on the line for this Lumberjack football team, the second longest winning streak in FCS. Lehigh has nine wins in a row going into today's action. Hawkins' kick will be down in the end zone for a touchback, and Ed Lamb, he's got plenty of time because he has Brad Sorensen at quarterback, three timeouts in his sweat pocket that he's reaching in, he's thinking, he's just checking right now, he's going, yep, I've got three timeouts right here. But he's going against this NAU defense that has come up huge, has not given up a single touchdown today, and uh, it starts with that offensive line. You see Blair Wisham there, or I said offensive line, defensive line. Lucky, lucky Dozier. Dozier, check that. Lucky, lucky Dozier, it's gonna be a key. We talked about him. The strong safety out of Sacramento, California. Sorensen out to the far side, caught and complete and uh -oh, out of they're bounds. Gonna, they're going to get called for a, a late hit out of bounds. That's uh, And it's a good call, fans. It really is. Fatu Mawala on the catch. Blair, and he Blair was wish him on the coverage there. You know, th that's... You know, it's, it's tough because... Blair Wisham just coming up trying to make a play, and then the receiver ended up stepping out of bounds just before he did. I don't like that call. Reggie, you don't like it? No, I don't like it. And I'm a receiver, too, guys. But I don't After like the that play, call. personal foul, lays it out of bounds. Number 26 in the defense. He barely stepped 15 in. 15-yard penalty, out. automatic first down. I don't think that guy likes it either. No, he's shaking his head <laughs> saying, no, I, I don't like it, guys. And, uh, Convey my feelings on Fox Sports Arizona. I don't like it. On one play, Southern Utah gets about half the yardage they need to get within field goal range to tie this game. First down and 10. Thunderbirds left to right at their own 49. Sorensen, two wides to both sides of the field. He's in the shotgun. And he calls for the ball. Looking to the near side, throws it. It is caught at the Lumberjack 45-yard line, racing to the sidelines to get out of bounds. Griff McNabb, the junior out of Pocatello, Utah, transfer out of the University of Utah. McNabb caught that ball, and I thought raced to the out of bounds as though time was a, a significant issue. I don't uh, think it is at this point with 4.50 left in, in the game. Southern Utah, plenty of time to do what they'd like. Hey, I think the momentum of the ball from the quarterback just carried him out of bounds, guys. That guy has a cannon. <laughs> that's uh, that's a quite a cannon. If you could do that, I'll, I'll give you that one. Second down at a yard of the Lumberjack 42, Sorensen. 
Shotgun, two wides on both sides. He calls for the ball. Throws another rifle shot inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Caught by C.J. Morgan of the Thunderbirds, and that'll be more than enough to move the sticks forward. And Reg, maybe a, a little more cushion defensively for NAU. They're keeping everything in front of them, but uh, they're giving up some yardage while they do it. Yeah, and, and, and Sorensen's taking advantage of that. The, the corners have backed off a couple of yards, and so he's just hitting them short, trying to slowly move them down, just so that he can bring them up and then bust it deep. Calmly leading his teammates downfield. Brad Sorensen in his final game as a Thunderbird. First and 10 at the Lumberjack 37. Another sharp pass and caught falling down. Griff McNabb, it'll be a gain of about three yards to the Lumberjack 35-yard line. And you bring in pressure. Brad Sorensen recognizing that pressure and getting the ball quickly out to McNabb. If you're going to bring pressure on Brad Sorensen, you better get to him. Because if you don't, he has the kind of arm, quick release, and velocity to get the ball into the hands of a receiver in short order. He just did right there to McNabb. Second down and eight. 35-yard line of the Lumberjacks. NAU showing pressure. Sorensen. Free play. NAU yep, went offside. Offsides. The Jacks trying to jump a little bit on the snap, and they jump beyond the snap, and that guy's hot. He is not happy. And that's that's tough because that penalty will put them in field goal position. Offside, 13 of the defense. Five-yard penalty, Chris second Conley down. Chris for NAU just mistiming the blitz and uh, tried to get back, but the, ba the ball was snapped just as Conley was trying to get back on his, his side of the line of scrimmage. Colton Cook's career long is 49 yards as a field goal kicker. He's got the leg. Remember, we're... Of course, we're at altitude, and, and that gives him additional confidence. They're, they're within that range right now. Sorensen in the shotgun, second down to three at the 30. Be about a 47-yarder from here. Trips out to the far side, and underneath throw, and incomplete. I don't see any flags coming down. Yeah, I was nervous because Mike Dosen came up and, and timed that one. It appears perfectly getting a hand on the ball. Get on your feet and make some noise. And that's, close. A, that's a big play because if Mike Dosen doesn't either get his hand on the ball or bring the ball, the receiver down, that very well could have been a touchdown. Looked like he had him hooked with his left arm a little bit in the back, and uh, I'm a receiver, guys. Look, I might have been wanting that we're, ball. We're, we're going to take that one, Reg. I know we will. <laughs> Shotgun Sorensen, third and three at the Lumberjack 30. Down by three. Three to go. Sorensen in trouble. Steps up. Fires and it's caught. Well within field goal range. Fatu Moala. First down Southern Utah. And credit Brad Sorensen. NAU bringing pressure. The two inside linebackers on the dog. Brad so Sorensen on his own. Avoiding pressure. Stepping up and hitting a crossing receiver to pick up the first down and make it a very more manageable field goal attempt if uh, they may not need one that. the way they're moving right now Kevin they still have three timeouts 242 and counting now they go into the I formation and Sorensen sets up under center they'll be you would think conservative first to ten at the 16 of the Lumberjacks they hand it off to Wilson Wilson runs right cuts back left gets inside the 15 and gets the ball even closer for what could be a game time field goal attempt and how big is that two-point conversion now oh boy, isn't it though? for NAU? But again, Southern Utah not thinking a field goal right now with 2.10 left in the game. They'd, they'd like a touchdown to take the lead. Here's an email from Orlando, Florida. Shout out to my brother Tom in Pacific Grove and Colleen working at Granny's Closet. Thanks for that email. Second down at six at the Lumberjack 12. Under two to go. I formation. No wide receivers. This is the jumbo set now for Southern Utah. Handoff, Wilson, left side, racing into the middle of the field between the hashes, gets you inside the 10, and he's pretty darn close to another Southern Utah first down before Quinton Contreras tackled it. Southern Utah, though, getting quite a bit more conservative as we get uh, within a minute 30 in this game. Handing the ball off on two consecutive plays. They've had a lot of success in the air. 
a huge third down play with a minute 18 left. 1, 12, 11, 10 left in the game in regulation. Third and two, straight eye formation. And NAU taking their final timeout with a minute five. Maybe something they... Timeout, Northern Arizona, their third and final timeout of the half. Something they didn't like defensively. Um, you hope that doesn't come back to, to hurt them. If Southern Utah manages to score a touchdown here, NAU will be forced to try to drive the, the length of the field without any timeouts. Steve from Orlando, Florida writes in, he was curious if Southern Utah has a connection to the University of Utah because there are lots of players that have transferred from the Utes to the Thunderbirds program. Probably the connection being that they're both in the Beehive State. <laughs> um, let's, let's take a look at the, another look a second, maybe a third look here. This is the uh, the touchdown play that gave NAU the lead for the first time in this game to R.J. Rickert. Rickert is a true sophomore. Look how open he is at the four-yard line. Spins around. And man, he just was not going to be denied the goal line. The sophomore out of Eddie Basha High School at Chandler. His uncle, Jarrell Robinson, was a wide receiver. And a good one at Arizona State University. Here we go. Some Southern Utah fans are hoping. Third down and two at the NAU eight-yard line. Sorensen, eye formation, heavy set. Handoff going up the middle. Wilson, he has enough for the first down. It's going to be first and goal. Does, a, does a couple things. It uh, allows Southern Utah to still have hope for a touchdown to take the lead and also is going to take, uh, allow Southern Utah, if they do kick a field goal, to wind this thing down to, uh, to where any you won't have any time. First down and goal from inside the five-yard line. Sorensen running up and down the line. Sets up under center in the eye formation. 40 seconds to go. Hands it off, Wilson. Wilson running left. He gets it. Balls loose. Balls on the deck. Balls on the deck. No, they're going to mark it down. Is it going to be marked down by contact? It is. And Southern Utah still with a full complement of timeouts here. Clock running, though. They're hustling up. 21, 20, 19. I formation. Second and goal from the two. Hand off. Wilson, he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. No, sir. No, sir. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Dozier. Shutting in from the strong timeout. safety position. Southern Utah, their first charge timeout of the half. Boy, they put it to him on that play. Wow, what a hit. Lucky Dozier. And we have a Southern Utah player down, but watch Lucky Dozier, number 20. Boom, right there. Hitting Wilson in the backfield and wrapping him up low. And we do still have a Southern Utah player down. It's Gavin Farr out of South Ogden, Utah, as we take a second look at the big play by Lucky Dozier. And Mitch, uh, there's not been a bigger play defensively or maybe for the entire team this season for NAU than the one coming up. On third down with 11 seconds left, this is it. You stop him. You force a field goal attempt. The ball right on the two-yard line. Out of Northridge High School, that young man, Gavin Farr, being helped off the field. Southern Utah able to run or pass with two timeouts left. Maybe the injury to an offensive lineman there may dictate a little bit what they do here offensively. 11 seconds to go, third and goal from the two. The big jumbo formation, I formation, Sorensen under center. Wilson the deep back, hands it to Wilson. Wilson running right, no! Denied the end zone again! A great push up front by that defensive line for NAU is gonna force what you would think would be a field goal attempt. Watch the replay, following the lead blocker, Beka, but, but great penetration. And but, there was the contact right there initially. 
Look at number 50 for the Lumberjacks, Steven Garcia out of Downey, California. I'll tell you what, though. For Ed Lamb, it's a, it's a decision much like going for two. You've got one play. Do you go for it? Go for the win. If you kick a field goal, you it's, go for the tie it, it's an overtime. overtime. And they're going to kick it. Ed Lamb, I think he's bringing out the field goal unit. He's going to try to send it to overtime, you think. And uh, you got to watch the fake here. Watch the fake. Yeah. Don't fall asleep Col now. Can't Colton fall asleep. Cook is 17 of 20. This is a short field goal attempt, an 18-yarder. Here's the snap of the hold. The kick from Cook is good, and we're going overtime. They may put another second on the clock. I looked over after it was good as we've got an injured Tim Wilkinson on the play, and there was a second left on the on the clock. But right now it it appears that it will go to the Lumberjacks' first overtime of this season. Last year here at Flagstaff, the season ender for both football teams. Brad Sorensen threw for 389 yards passing, two touchdowns to lead Southern Utah to a razor sharp 27-24 win over NAU, scoring 24 unanswered points in that game. And this is the fifth season in a row that these teams have played each other head to head. But the first time with both members of the Big Sky Conference. Are we taking a timeout? see our red hat on the field and waiting to hear if we're going to be pausing for a timeout before we go to overtime or are we going to keep it here they will bring the captains out and flip the coin to decide we're going to take a break here going into overtime we're tied at 15 this is big sky conference football on the fmc nau lumberjack network Keeping me company in New Hampshire, writes Glenn. Here we go, Sorensen, his first possession, right to left, over top, under center eye formation. Hands this ball off, no, instead it's going over on the other side of the field well, I to was, Hannah Brown, I and Hannah totally Brown, fooled myself. I was completely fooled. I, I thought for sure Brian Wilson was running the football. Next thing you know, I see Hannah Brown going to the right. I, I think that's the, a big game. I think the NAU defense was a little bit like you and I. As, uh, oh, that's a beautiful fake. As Brown picked up, well, he th <laughs> I didn't even see the throw. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I guess I that was, so was a good fake. Play action. <laughs> that was a great fake, huh? Hey, I mean, <laughs> Wilson sold the fake beautifully, the running back. First and six. First and goal from the six. I formation. This is the first possession of overtime. We're tied at 15. Sorensen under center. Takes the snap. That time he does hand it off to Wilson, run and left. And he'll be tackled inside the five to the four-yard line. We're tied at 15, the 11th-ranked Lumberjacks at Southern Utah University. Southern Utah, their final game of the year. They have a bye next week, so this is it for them. Trying to knock off a ranked NAU Lumberjack football team and put a screeching halt to their eight-game winning streak. This defense is, uh, at least late in this game, is a little bit... Uh, Bend, don't, but don't break. Of course, that, that goal line stance at the end of regulation gave them an opportunity to uh, play in overtime. And somebody's calling a timeout. Southern, Utah. Utah. Southern Utah. Southern Utah, Ed Lamb is calling a timeout. Here in our first overtime, we're tied at 15. Glenn in New Hampshire. I've had a tough day at work around the summer cottage on Lake Winnipesaukee. Listening to you and wishing I was there in Flagstaff rooting for the Jacks. Mary checking in and Kevin checking in. Watching in Gilbert, Arizona on Fox Sports AZ. Kevin was an NAU player in the late 70s, early 80s. We love watching the Lumberjacks on Saturday afternoon on Fox Sports Arizona. Great contact. We love hearing from both, both fans. Fans of Southern Utah and Fans of the Lumberjacks, it's a really neat personal connection. We've done that over the years here on our radio television simulcasts, and it's been a lot of fun. And we've got a great football game for you here on a Saturday afternoon in Flagstaff. Military Appreciation Day. 
They're coming right out and they're coming quickly. Second down and four. Second and goal from the four. Nope, no backs. No out. backs. They're spread. Look quads at to the right. Quads bunched up to the right. Single to the near side is Malala. Sorensen. And NEU's going to take a timeout because that's a formation they haven't seen. Timeout, Northern Arizona University. Defensive coordinator Andy Thompson's got the white polo shirt on and on the left side of your screen with the white baseball hat. Remember, you get one timeout per overtime sure. period. And so now both teams without a timeout. Reg, what do you think, man? Both teams playing a little chess out there. They're moving their queens and their bishops and their pawns. Yeah, they're trying to set them up. You know, everybody's taking a look. You know, they want to make sure that whatever they do, they don't make any kind of mistake. So that was a good call on both parts. That was a crazy formation, though. Uh, good thing the <laughs> NAU took a timeout because I don't think we've seen that either. I don't think we've seen quads <laughs> set up. <laughs> like punched up like that almost in a, a kind of a diamond looking formation on and, one and, side and zero backs so a wide receiver to uh, the near side Had NAU caught off a, a little bit off guard and, and a wise timeout. No more timeouts for either team We're in the we're in overtime We're tied at 15 Southern Utah the first possession and you will get a possession after this regardless of the outcome Let's give it another shot same shall formation. we same formation Malala to the near side, quads to the far side, under center Sorensen, no backs. Watch the receiver here to the near side, he's manned up one-on-one. -on -one. Now look at Sorensen, he's changing up the play. He takes the snap, he's going to run a quarterback keeper, dives into the end zone for a touchdown. That's what we were afraid of, yeah. NAU brought five defenders out to defend the four. Of course had the, uh, the receiver to the near side covered. And it allowed Brad Soren to sneak off to the right side, stretch out, and just get beyond the line or the goal line for the touchdown. There's the end zone look. Sorensen diving into the end zone, taking it in him himself. The preseason All-American and the preseason Big Sky Conference Player of the Year on offense. Here's the extra point. Very important in overtime. It's up and it's good. So what happens now is the, the Lumberjacks will now have a possession. And they must score a touchdown and get the extra point to send it to a second round of possessions. Field goal is no good, so it's four down territory. Taking a look at this pretty gutsy call by Ed Lamb. Watch the way Sorensen, he was going for that end zone. No one was going to stop him from diving in the, his last game as a, as a Southern Utah Thunderbird. What a gutsy player. What a gutsy call by Ed Lamb, his head coach. What that does now for NAU, everything is uh, four down territory. You know, you've, uh, you've got to score a touchdown to keep this one alive. NAU will start at the 25-yard line, right to left of an eye formation. Grossert, play action. He's in trouble. He's dancing around, rolling to his right, looking for somebody, finding finally Zach Bowman on the far sideline at about the 26. He, or 21 rather, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds short of the first down marker. A really nice play by, play by Kerry Grossert, who couldn't find an open receiver downfield, extending the play, running off to the right, finding Zach Bowman to pick up seven on first down. Yeah, he wanted to go inside to Austin Shanks on that, but he was covered, so he extended the play by rolling to his right. That was a great play. Yamodu singled out to the near side of the field eye formation. Grossert under center on second down and three. Hand off, Bowman dancing in the middle of the field that he's not going to be at the first down marker. Now remember, Gain of a yard, maybe two. In overtime, down seven, it's uh, third and short, but you know you have two offensive plays here. So that certainly uh, comes into your thinking in your play calling. Third down. Maybe a yard on the carry for Zach Bowman and Southern Utah continuing to do a good job of limiting the Walter Payton Award candidate. On his rush game, I formation, third and two at the 17. This is the heavy set. Multiple tight ends. Hand off, Bowman left side. He's got the first down. He's going to try to bounce. He can't quite do it, but he has the first down, most importantly, and he'll be tackled at around the 12-yard line. Zach Bowman darting through uh, past the line of scrimmage and then trying to make a play on two Southern, yeah, Southern Utah defenders. The first one got a good piece of him and the second one finished him off, but not before he picked up the first down. 
First down for NAU, and the ball is spotted at the Thunderbird 12. They have to get a touchdown and an extra point. Cole comes in motion, now sets. Play action to Bowman, throws it into the end zone, touchdown! Deshaun Walker! Play action, sucked that linebacking core up, allowed Deshaun Walker to uh, find an opening right in the post, at the post. Yeah, they're exploiting the middle of that field. That's what's been successful for them this whole late in the game. That's where they've been getting their scores. You're exactly right, Reggie. The last, uh, what is it, uh, 15 points offensively for this uh, NAU team right there in the middle of the football field. An extra point has never been more important for Andy Wilder. Here's the snap of the hole. The yes. kick is up. It's good, and it's all good at Granny's as we'll and a late we have a late flag down, but the extra point was good. We'll see what the call is. And remember, in overtime, there's no kickoff to assess the penalty. It, if it goes against either team, it could be on the first offensive play if the field goal or the point after stands. Bruce Brondi is the referee. He'll make the announcement here in the Sky Dome. Ooh, and that's a fifth. Uh -oh. This may be a hold, which is not going to make this nearly as easy. Of a Holding, 62 of the offense. 10 yard penalty, replay the try. Oh, Jerome Sowers is uh, perplexed at the minimum. Now this becomes more than just a routine extra point. It now becomes a 30 yard field goal attempt, if you will, for Andy Wilder. Right in the middle of the field. Andy Bachelier is the holder. Hayden Renning is the snapper, and the Lumberjacks have to have this. This extra point or ball game is over. This is a 30-yard extra point from the middle of the field. Here's the snap and the hold. Wildman. It's good, and it's all good at Granny's again. Boy, that was a scary extra point. From a 30-yard field goal is what it uh, ended up being. And hey, don't 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 hold your chest. That makes me a little nervous after last week. <laughs> Well, Jerome Sowers takes a momentary, momentary deep breath, and now we'll put Southern Utah back on the field offensively. No. Oh, oh no, no. NAU, NAU gets me. it first. Pardon. Yep, you guys, pardon me. And they, they kind of lose the advantage of playing second now that the overtime goes into the second period. NAU will be forced to start out offensively and... Uh, Give, give Southern Utah now the advantage as they flip sides of the field right. to know uh, what, what, what's going to happen and what they have to do when they get the football. You having fun watching some Big Sky Conference football action? Does get much better than this here on Fox Sports Arizona. Hey, checking some of the other scores around the sky. Northern Colorado goes on the road at Weber State and beats the Wildcats 42 to 34. Congratulations to Nigel Burton and the Bears. Portland State gets walloped at Montana State, 65 to 30. Montana State keeping pace in the Big Sky Conference, going to nine and one overall, six and one in Big Sky play, beating Portland State 65 to 30. Early in the fourth quarter, hold on, Big Sky fans, listen to this score. The Aggies of UC Davis are leading Eastern Washington, 28 to 24. Eastern Washington is also 6-1 in the conference. Idaho State plays at Cal Poly later today. Let's take a look at Southern Utah's touchdown in overtime from Brad Sorensen. The quarterback keeper. Now we've switched directions. NAU is moving left to right on their second possession of overtime. First to 10 to the 25. Grosser hands it off to Zach Bowman, dancing right. Gets his way inside the 20, keeping the legs pumping. And he's gonna be close to a lumberjack first down. He came close to popping that one, guys. If he hadn't have stumbled inside, he'd have been gone. Watch on the second look. Zach Bowman out of Chandler's Hamilton High School. Positioning himself to become NAU's all-time leading rusher next week, potentially as a junior. James Kowser making the tackle. Second down and nine, or pardon me, second and one from the 15-yard line. Hand off Bowman, no! Hit and hit hard. 
Zach Bowman was hit uh, behind the line of deep, scrimmage. Deep behind the line of scrimmage. Fortunately for any of you, actually shed the first tackler and was able to maybe uh, save himself two or three yards there right at the end of the play. What did Cowser think him, of that contest? They had Kevin. him tackled at the 20, and uh, yeah, he ended up getting another three yards, stumbling forward to the 17. Third down, and they've lost a yard on that play, so it's going to be third and two at the Thunderbird 17-yard line. Shotgun formation now for Grosser. He's got Bowman off the right shoulder. Calls for the ball. Looking near side. Floating one into the end zone for Yumonu. Caught touchdown! Ify Yumonu! That is a great catch by Ify Yumonu. There was contact, a lot of contact. Ball was very well thrown. Ify was able to keep his concentration. Catch the ball over his shoulder. Yeah, you could, any, you, touchdown. you could see that one coming, guys. When they walked that corner up on him, he was one-on-one. -on -one. Perfect for the fade route. Perfect timing, perfect catch. That was beautifully arced out of the hand of Kerry Grosser. And now the extra point attempt from Andy Wilder. Here's the snap, a high one. The hold, the kick is up, and it's good, and it's all good at Granny's again. Makes it 29-22 Lumberjacks in overtime. And now we'll give Southern Utah University possession of the football. And they'll have an opportunity to try to send this to a third series of possessions. But in order to do that, they must score a touchdown and convert an extra point. Exactly the same situation that NAU had. Now Southern Utah able to operate starting from the NAU 25, knowing on every uh, every first down we've got four plays to convert. Overtime two. It's now 29-22. Southern Utah held a 12-0 lead in this game forever. And each, uh, remember each team now with, uh, with uh, an additional timeout because we're now in the second overtime. Sorensen in the shotgun, left to right, takes the snap, swings it out into the flat, looking for Mr. Wilson. Wilson catches the ball. Wilson is tackled immediately. And a whole bunch of blue shirts on that far side collapsing on Wilson to make sure he came down, not picking up anything. Look at that whole uh, crew. Boy, they were swarming on him. As we take a look at Ed Lamb. This is it for the Southern Utah University Thunderbirds this season. This is their final game. They have a bye next week. Second down and 10. Sorensen in the shotgun. There's hey, movement. movement. Movement on the line. That right side of the offensive line moves. Full start. 7-2 of the offense. And then you can sense not only down. the crowd, but the defensive players for NAU. Their energy. Guys, you can feel it all the way on the sidelines. That energy is just tremendously high right now. They're fired up. Right side of the line. Watch it. Watch it. There. Second down and 15 from the 30. Sorensen in the shotgun. Pressure coming. He gets the pass off. Yes. If it's intercepted, it's game over. No, oh, it's no, he's out of bounds. Oh, oh my! I tell you what, let's get a replay there. Ooh, I really that, thought he was, he came in bounds. If he had caught the ball in bounds, the game would be over. Brad Sorensen avoiding the rush and just throwing it up. Oh, and, uh, he's probably, in bounds. Probably Boy. a good call. Uh, his feet close. were in bounds, yes. but I think his upper body it, came down first out of bounds. I think so too, K. Steve, yeah, I do. Good call. Close, good call. but good call. Third down. 15 Thunderbirds at the NAU 31-yard line. Sorensen calls for the ball out of the shotgun. Throws this one wide open to the 25, and he is ankle tackled by Lucky Dozier. And a big tackle by Lucky Dozier because there was no help along the near side here. If Lucky Dozier hadn't uh, brought down Eastern Pedersen, he would have scored a touchdown. And now Pedersen, mm. who's been big for Southern Utah, goes down with an injury. Pedersen is down. Going to bring up a, a fourth and one? Yeah, I'd say it's about one yard. Reg, it, it, would you just see what happened yeah. to Pedersen? 
Yeah, Lucky uh, hit him low, grabbed his leg, and he was trying to extend, and it made just kind of a bruise in the thigh or the ankle, maybe twisted a little bit, but uh, Lucky put a good hit on him, thank goodness, otherwise he would have been gone. Out of Lone Peak High School in Highland, Utah, the sophomore 6'3", 210, hope he's okay. He's had a great game. Big wide receiver, great target. He's going to be a really good Big Sky Conference wide receiver the next couple of years for this Thunderbird yes, football and that team. that also brings up a fourth down, guys. He was just short. So now as they help Pedersen off the field, Southern Utah. Now take a look again at the almost interception. Look at this case, Steve. Again, I, what, what's hard is, what, what, what's tough is, is uh, Boy, you, you can't is... quite see his upper body again. Even in high def. But Ryan Reardon, number 44, is kind of rocking our view the, a little the, bit. The truck but was making a good point. Yep. The knees saying, looked like the knee know, was down. If, if maybe the knee was down before, a part of his upper body yep. yeah. is uh, out of bounds. But Gentlemen. nevertheless, fourth down here. Any who comes up with a stop here, they Ball get game. the win. Fourth down at a yard. Sorensen in eye formation. Under center. Takes the snap, hands it off to the fullback, Ika, and he's got it. Ika, that, uh, Lavelle Ika, 5'7", 240 pounds out of Salt Lake City's Bountiful High School. He's a bountiful fullback. That's a, that's, that's, a that's, lot of, that's a lot of mass to stop in motion. 240 pounds running low to the ground. And they, they need a little less than a yard, and, and, and he clearly got it. Ryan Reardon there to bring him down, but not before he picked up the first down. He has three touchdowns that, this season. That's only, I believe, his 14th carry of the year. First down and 10. Southern Utah extends it. They're now at the Lumberjack 14, left to right. Here's the snap to Sorensen. Throws this one close to the end. all caught! Is he in? He is! Touchdown, Southern Utah! Oh, my goodness. A really nice catch. Let's see if we can take another look at this one. Great that is Fatou Moala. Moala recognizing where the football was, purposely thrown to the outside, makes it almost an impossible play for Devin Willis to defend out there. A perfectly thrown football and an opportunity for Southern Utah here to take it into the third overtime. Here's the kick from Cook. It's good. We go to the third overtime. We go to the third overtime. We're tied at 29 with the Hinton Burdick Grand Canyon Trophy on the line. And both of these teams, I think, would love to be able to hoist that trophy up. But for NAU, so much more on the line. A win today, nine wins in a row for the Lumberjacks. A win today, clinching at least a share of the Big Sky Championship. A win today punches their ticket to the playoffs so much at stake an important change when you enter the third overtime is you can no longer kick an extra point you're forced to go for two if you score a touchdown executive vice president at nau dr mj mcmahon writing an email here in overtime look at that catch moala that is a quality catch if we take a second look at this one the Sorensen pass was right on the money yeah, that was perfect. What a throw over the shoulder, back shoulder. Good adjustment to the ball, and as usual, go up and get it. He did that. MJ writes in, great defense by NAU. Let's go, Jax. Joy writes, how would a postseason game work with the basketball schedule? I don't know. Let's beat the Thunderbirds first, I say. Hey, Mitch, enjoying the game. I'm an NAU student on an exchange in Oahu, Hawaii. Nice. It's I don't about, know. If, it's I'm, about 32 degrees here today. I'm not sure if I'm enjoying it or not. That's from Rachel. Supporting her favorite player, number 62. She Boy, writes. Rachel, pretty, pretty rough exchange program you're in there. <laughs> Hayden Redding is number 62, by the way. And now, in the third overtime, Southern Utah gets the first possession. Like a couple of heavyweight boxers back and forth punching each other in the face. Southern Utah, offense, Sorensen, shotgun. We're tied at 29 in the third overtime. Timeout NAU, they saw something they didn't like. Remember, in each 
in each time or each overtime period you're you're allocated one time out now NAU and, and Andy Thompson defensive coordinator out there frustrated with something some sort of uh, yeah, their alignment, mentally. They, yeah, their alignment wasn't uh, what they were wanting, and that uh, forced them to get a timeout. But, but uh, Reg, it, you know, if, if uh, maybe a, a good timeout, if, if uh, you're lined up wrong, let's get it corrected and get, uh, get the right uh, defense out there. Yeah, because they, they did actually, I was sitting there watching, they had a slot guy who would have been uncovered. Here's an email from Camp Verde from uh, Mark Gaffney and Rick Schilke. They're watching in Camp Verde on Fox Sports Arizona. They say it's starting to snow there, too. They love the coverage on uh, Fox Sports Arizona. Prescott, Arizona checking in. Burt, a 57-year-old freshman at NAU Yavapai, riding in. That guy right there wants to stop Brad Sorensen. That's Lucky Dozier. First down and 10, Thunderbirds. Two wides to both sides of the field. At the 25, Sorensen calls for the ball, fires this one, and is caught. Hey, that is Easton Pedersen. He's back out on the field, makes the catch. Good to see him back on the field healthy. Pedersen Although back out there. Limping Mike, a little bit. Mike Dosen on the coverage, tackling him immediately. NAU right now in their nickel defense. So you'll see Dosen out there along with Dozier and Blair Wisham in the nickel package. Wish him the free safety in the middle of the field. Gain of three, second and seven at the 22. Shotgun, Sorensen throws it behind the intended receiver, goes incomplete. Yeah, clearly some miscommunication between uh, receiver and quarterback on that one. Hey, I really love this, this email from Bert, who is a 57-year-old freshman at NAU Yavapai in Prescott. He says he feels like he's a college kid watching NAU football for the first time. Sounds like he is. Says he's thinking about going out for the team. Third down and seven for Southern Utah in the third overtime. Mitch Stroman along with former Lumberjack quarterback Kevin Stevens. Southern Utah is going to take their time out now. Reggie. Down on the sidelines, our spotters, Charlie Crown out a wrench. Ed Lamb saw something he didn't like either. Yeah, he must have, uh, but last play, what he was looking for, the quarterback was looking for the out, and the receiver was doing a slant. So we, I think they just want to make sure they're all on the same pitch because this is a huge play for these guys on this one. Zamora Nation checking in from the state of Colorado. Lori Zamora saying, let's go, Jacks. Of course, the family of former punter. Drew Zamora of the Lumberjacks. My aunt and uncle in San Diego are watching on Fox Sports Arizona. Zenaida and Carl say NAU fans are going to stand by this team. You may not be able to notice, but it's loud out here. All kinds of comments coming into our email inbox. Remember, with a, with a win here, as we look at the Big Sky Conference uh, standings... They go to 7-0 for the first time ever in Big Sky Conference history for NAU. By NAU way. does no worse than, than a share of the Big Sky Conference championship. There's a, a ton on the line right here in the third overtime. Brad Sorensen. This is his final game as a Thunderbird. Will it be a miraculous overtime win or a loss on the road in Flagstaff. Third and seven. Sorensen in the shotgun. Two wides on both sides of the field. He calls for the ball. He's looking out there. Throws it inside. Caught at the 15. Tackles being missed. He's going to roll into the end zone and dive in for the touchdown. Pedersen ran a nice pattern. Secured the football and then did even a better job making guys miss and uh, stumbling in there for the touchdown. There were several opportunities to tackle him right here, right there. And look at the dive in for Easton Pedersen. And Pedersen, remember. They've got to go for two uh, now, Kevin, as you talked right. about earlier. It's uh, the extra point attempts are done. They have to go for two. It's by rule once you hit the third overtime. They're going to line up in that same uh, quads to the right, singles receiver to the left, and I no see, backs. I see confusion. Here's a snap. Into the end zone, drops! Southern Utah got the formation defensively that they wanted. One-on-one -on -one coverage to the single receiver to the left. Ball was well thrown by Be uh, Brad Sorensen. 
and uh, it was simply dropped. And, and he bobbled the snap a little bit. I think that actually threw his timing off just slightly. You know, for a quarterback that throws such a good football, when your timing is off even a little bit, Kevin Stevens, as a former quarterback, that can be bothersome, especially but, on a timing route. But again, it was a, a ball that was pretty well thrown, the same uh, s same route that, that they scored an earlier touchdown on. I thought a ball that should have been caught for the two-point conversion. Now, NAU still has to score a touchdown yes, here. Yes, they do. And, and, and in order to uh, <laughs> win it here in the third overtime, convert. They can't, uh, just like Southern Utah, they don't have the opportunity to simply kick a, an extra point if they do score a touchdown. We are in the third overtime. It's NAU's turn now. 35-29. NAU trips out to the far side of the field. First down and 10 at the Southern Utah 25. Grosser hands it off on the end around to the deuce. And boy, he got smacked pretty hard before he could turn the corner. No gain on the play for Austin Shanks. Again, uh, credit this Southern Utah. Not only were they not fooled on the end around by Austin Shanks, but they uh, they were right there with the football and brought him down immediately. Hey, Reg, I, I really like the discipline of this Southern Utah defensive unit throughout the course of this, the course of this football game. Yeah, they, they really pay attention. They stay in their lanes. They watch. They don't over-pursue, and that's why they are so close to the ball at all times. Second and ten now. Under center, Grosser takes a snap, hands it off to Bowman, going right. Bowman, he's at the 20s at 15, near sideline. First down, NAU, inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. I tell you, he never ceases to amaze me. The quick movement, that vision, oh, it's just unbelievable. This guy is all that he's cracked up to be. Little, little bobbled snap there. Got Again. to Kerry Grosser, got the ball, fortunately, to Zach Bowman, who did the rest. Coming right at you, fans at home here on Fox Sports Arizona in HD. Knocked out of bounds. First down, NAU here in the third overtime. They must score a touchdown. Rickert moves in motion right to left. Handoff Bowman running left. Gets hit and kind of bounces around to get inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Fentroy making the contact for Southern Utah University along with J.T. Anderson. Again, uh, mm. NAU in four down territory. And he is a tired man right there. As, uh, that's Zach Bowman running off, limping. Certainly more than you'd like to see. Second down at seven. Ball is at the Thunderbird nine. In the third overtime, empty backfield. Spread formation, Grossert calls for the ball. Grossert's under big pressure. Rolling, he's got to find somebody or get rid of the ball in a hurry. Throws it into the end zone, it's going to go incomplete. There was a whole lot of bodies down there. Kerry Grosser did a nice job avoiding the, the, the oncoming rush, but uh, throwing it down there where there were a lot of blue and white shirts, Reg. Yeah, there was quite a few. It was coming right at me, but uh, he did well to, to maintain that play. He hurdled one guy and and uh, we're still able to almost make a good play out of it. Preseason All-American tackle Cody Larson out of Draper, Utah, chasing down Kerry Grossard on that play. Third down and seven. No field goals allowed here. Again. Kobon Dabowski Johnson is in. Watch Ify down here, man Ify for man. on the near side. They're going to hand it off to Kovan, running into the right side of the line. He is not going to get to the first down marker. He will advance the ball to about the five-yard line. Brings this is up a fourth down. And fourth down means you go for it, obviously, because you have to score a touchdown. And they're, they're keeping Zach Bowman on the sideline, Dabowski Johnson on the field for this fourth down. I think you're going to see a pass. Watch, uh, watch a slant pattern. They've gone to that a couple of times. This is the ball game here, guys. Right here, fourth down. They have to get at least four yards or the game is over. Snap to Grossard in the shotgun. Feeling pressure. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Down he goes! Game over! The streak has come to an end. Kerry Grossard just could not find an open receiver and uh, tried to extend the play, but... Credit Southern Utah's rush that uh, it was problematic all day for NAU and Kerry Grossert holding on to the ball to the very end. Let's take a look at this last play of the game. Grossert 
needing to get a minimum of four yards. Here comes the pressure from the behind had, him. Had Dabowski Johnson maybe open in the flat, but he couldn't see him because of that rush. And that's it. Sorensen and Grossert exchange some hand slaps, some shoulder pad hits, a couple of Warriors, two seniors.